Well, hello everyone. How's everybody doing? Hi, happy Saturday, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, please make sure you are on mute, um, but this will be interactive. So I don't want this to be a training where I'm just talking, talking, talking. Um, I want this to be interactive where you all are sharing some of your challenges, asking questions. But my goal for this training is to make sure that by the time you finish with this training, you know exactly how to prospect for the people that you are looking for. And so to start, you got to know what you're looking for. I would say the biggest challenge that I see with people with their prospecting is you're not putting out exactly what you're looking for. And so you're getting anything and everything, anybody and everybody. They're not doing what you want them to do in their business. And the main reason is because you are not being uh, specific about what you want. It's almost like what they say with prayer. You got to be specific about what you're asking for, right? Don't just say you want a man, right, ladies? You got to be very specific. I want him 6'2". I want him to have good credit, no kids. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, the same said, thing. Please said, make uh, sure you right. are on mute. Thank you. It's the same thing with prospecting. Um, how many of you, and I'm going to open up the chat because I want to, I want everyone to be engaged. This is not the time to be shy and I need everybody to be transparent. Okay. Can we, can we have transparency on this training today? All right, good. I want you to type in the chat. If you are that someone who most of the people that you have gotten on your team has been through some type of post where you were talking about travel. Okay. Please make sure you are on mute. Thank you. Okay, Tara, Tanya, Kim, Benita. Okay, I want y'all to look at the chat. I want y'all to look at the chat of everyone who was saying that they are finding their people by doing some type of travel post. Okay, so now here's my question to all of you that have responded. Are you also wanting to secure directorship and secure the legacy? Just type legacy if you want to secure the legacy. Okay, I want y'all to look at the chat and look at all of the people who say they want to secure the legacy but yet most of the people that they are attracting to the business are being attracted by the travel posts. And so now do you see where the disconnect is? Because if the people that you are bringing into the business are focusing on booking travel, and we want them to book travel, but honestly, what we really want is the hybrid. We want people who are going to do both. Right, so I'm not here today to say, oh no, just get people who want to build the team. No, because don't you want that 10% override on them travel commissions from the travel that they're booking? I'm saying we want to find true hybrids. And so the problem with that I see with most people, and I've done one-on-ones with a lot of you that are on here, the problem that I see is that all you're doing is putting out travel posts and you're attracting people who want to book travel and then you get frustrated with them when they don't build. And so I need you to remember that whatever you lead with to attract your people to catch their attention is going to be the same thing that they hold on to and run with. So you can't do the bait and switch. Who knows what the bait and switch is? Go ahead, Amira. What's the bait and switch? The bait and switch is when you um you put out something that you're looking for, put out something that you're going to provide. Yeah, this one probably then... in the video. Go ahead. Um and uh they um when it actually comes to fruition, it's a totally different story. It 
has another demand on you or it's a different type of product. So you start with one thing and then you put them on into something else. Exactly. So the bait and switch is you put out a travel post to attract people to the business opportunity. And then when they come in all excited to book travel and now you're like, okay, I need you to get on um, basic training. I need you to get on the IMV. I need you to get, and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. What does that have to do with IntelliTravel? I didn't come here for that. Anybody have that problem or is it? Yeah. Right. So that's the bait and switch. So that's what we don't want to do. And so what I'm going to do today is to share with you some tips to help you find the people that you truly want. And, and I hope everybody has a paper and pen because I need you to take some notes and we're going to do some exercises together um, that is going to help you. And I need you to pay this forward. I need the people who aren't on, I need you to share this with your team members. I need you to do this exercise with your new business partners, with your existing team. All right. So the first exercise or thing that I want to, and I'm going to share my screen because I want everybody to take a picture of this. Let me see, am I there? Hold on. Now I got too many things open. There we go. If your why isn't strong enough to push you to go after your goal, then chances are that why could turn into the obstacle that will block you from ever achieving it. I don't want you guys to just understand that statement. I want you to understand it and overstand it. Because at the end of the day, it comes down to the why. And we always say, if your why doesn't make you cry, it's not strong enough. So with that being said, one of the main problems with the people that you're bringing in is you are not identifying their why and how this business could benefit them. And the why can't be a surface why. How many of you would say that one of the reasons that you joined the business is because you wanted to travel more? Just type travel more in the chat if that is one of the reasons why you joined this business. Okay. Look at all the people in the chat who join the business because they think that that is their why. And I'm about to show you how that isn't their real why. That's their surface why. All right. So, Missy, you are one of the people who said that you joined this business to travel more. But let me ask you this question, Melissa. Riley, did you need this business to travel more? Or could you have just been booking more trips and traveling more? Melissa, come off mute. Am I frozen? No, you're not frozen. I was just trying to come off of you. Hello, everyone. Yes. Um, no, I did not need the business to travel more. I could have just traveled more, but it just definitely caught my eye when okay. it was introduced to me. Okay, that's good. Uh, Christelle Jones, did you need this business to travel more or could you just have been booking more trips and traveling? Well, I needed the discounts to make me travel more, so yes. Okay, so now when she says, I thank you, when she says I needed the discounts, you know what I hear? She needed money. So that just took, took us to the next level of the why. Y'all following that? Is it me freezing or are y'all freezing? Am I freezing you up? You up a little bit. A little bit, okay. We can hear you, but you I just- I can hear you, answer, but you're not Okay, okay. So I want y'all to catch that. She said, I needed the discount, but really what that translates to is she needed money. 
So we got to, this is why we have two ears and one mouth. We got to listen to what people are saying and to get down to the real why for why they're joining the business. And at the end of the day, it always comes down to the money, right? Now, here's an exercise. I want all of you to type in the chat what your why is for doing the business now, currently, today. Just one. And you may have multiple, but I just want you to put one of them in the chat. Okay, I see freedom, retire early. I owe it to myself to live a better, more fruitful life, extra income, freedom, to increase my income, retire early, financial freedom, time freedom, to retire properly, legacy, generational wealth, work for self, extra income, leave job early, extra income, financial freedom, increase freedom, build my own empire, not someone else's, stay retired and not live to exist, extra income, extra income. Don't want fixed income when I retire, that's good. Financial stability after retirement. So, those are all the things that you want, but believe it or not, those things are, if you don't achieve them, there's no real consequence to it. And that's the problem why your why isn't pushing you to do the things that you wanna do or that you're able to attract the people that you wanna attract, right? So for those of you who are saying financial freedom, right? You might be in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, even your 60s. You haven't had financial freedom up until this point, have you? <laughs> so what's the real consequence to you not achieving it now? Nothing. You're just going to keep living the way you're living. Right? For those of you who put that, you know, you want to retire early. Okay, you've been working all your life, probably most of your adult life. So what's the real consequence to you not being able to retire early now? Nothing really. You're just going to keep working and doing what you've been doing. So do you see how those things that you put I there, did. they are, can y'all please make sure you are on mute? Please. You, what you put down are things that you desire and you hope for, you wish for but there's no real consequence to you not achieving them because you would just be living the same life you've been living. Y'all following what I'm saying? It's, it's just like, oh, I would love to retire early. I would love financial freedom. I would love time freedom, but there's no consequence to you not achieving the goal. That's why it's not pushing you to really go hard in your business because there's no consequence. What happens if you don't retire early? Nothing, you're just gonna keep working. What happens if you don't have the time freedom? Nothing, you just don't have the time freedom. The same thing you've been not having most of your life. So let's first drill down for you what your real why is, because if you don't have your real why, you are going to find every single excuse. You're gonna keep giving yourself excuses for why you're not going to your weekly meeting. You're gonna keep giving yourself excuses for why you're not registered for convention. You're going to keep giving your excuses for why you don't have a daily method of operation. You're going to keep giving excuses for why your team isn't doing anything. And it's just excuses. So here's the exercise. I want y'all to write this down. Write this question down first. What are three things, obstacles, challenges that you have gone through in your life that you are saying never again will I be in that situation 
What are three obstacles, challenges, things that you have gone through in your life that you are saying, never again will I be in that situation? And now once you write that question down, I want you to write down your three never agains. Because we always say, if your why doesn't make you cry, it's not strong enough, right? And so you wanted to have financial freedom. Does that make you cry? When you think about it, you wanting to retire early, is, is that gonna make you cry? No, because those are surface wise. That's not the real why. But if you can identify that real why that makes you cry, that takes you back to a place that you wanted to forget, it might just put a tear in your eye. And I'm gonna go first with my three never agains. And they're very personal to me, but this is how deep you need to go with it. And some of you may be, maybe you come from money. So you've never had to go through some things. You might not even have a never again because everything has been handed to you. I don't know, but that's not my situation. Never again will my lights get cut off on a Tuesday and I can't get them cut back on till payday Friday. That's one of my never agains. Never again will my car get repossessed. And now I have to go to an auction to get something cheap. Which was like a total waste of money because it was a lemon and needed all this work. Never again will I have my home go into foreclosure. See, the one thing that I know for certain is if I would have had my planet marketing business back then, my lights wouldn't have been cut off. Why? Because I would have had multiple streams of income coming in. My car would not have been repossessed. Why? because I would have had multiple streams of income coming in. My homes that I worked so hard, cause I didn't lose just one home. I lost two homes in 2008, two. And I busted my butt to get those homes. My husband and I both and lost both of them because we did not have multiple streams of income. And so I can tell you with certainty, if I would have had planet marketing back then, I would not have lost our homes. Never again will I have to borrow money from a family member to buy diapers, to buy milk, to feed my family. Never again will I have to turn over that five gallon water jug to get the quarters out so I can put gas in my car. You ain't been through nothing until you had to pay for gas with coins. Never again will I have to eat cereal for dinner because I can't afford to buy meat. When you're prospecting, you have got to have the I can change your life conversation with people. But y'all are too busy talking about cruises and all inclusives. That's your conversation with people. This is why you're not finding the right people. Because no one's having the I can change your life conversation. Why? Because you're not asking the right questions. 
Go ask your next prospect, what are their three never agains and share your three and see how that conversation changes. Now you're having the real, I can change your life conversation. Now they're gonna want to get the information about your business opportunity. Now, when they come in the business, yeah, they're gonna book travel. Cause I mean, that's a product, it's sexy, it's fun. But what's gonna be in the forefront of their mind is I'm doing this business so that my never agains will truly be never agains. Because prior to this business, I could tell you that my never agains were just I hope they don't happen again. I pray they don't happen again. But what really did I have in place to ensure that my never again would truly be never again? Nothing. It was a hope and a prayer. So I wanna go through, for those of you, if, if you're comfortable, please share your never agains in the chat. Because I want other, I want all of you to look at the chat and see some of these never agains. Because these are the same people that are out there that you could be prospecting. They were once a prospect and now they're a business partner wanting to build their planet marketing business. My sister was in the hospital on her deathbed from cancer. Never again will I not be financially free to be able to book the trip and just go and have to borrow money from others to get to my family. That's a deep never again. You got a family member in another state or another country and you can't get to them and they need you. You may never see them alive again, but because you don't have the money, you can't get there. That is a very strong never again. That's why you started this business. Is it Ortasia? I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Yes, it is. Ortasia, that's your real why. What did you think yes. your real why was? Um, just so I could travel more. And, but um but um I I recently as a recently met, this is a new uh family member that I met and um quick backstory. And my, I met my family um on ancestry dot com and um I had I had never met them before. I didn't know I had all these sisters and she's one year older than me. So to find out that she was sick with cancer that was our first conversation and um she's always tried to prepare me you know to you know all right you're gonna be big sis when my day comes and they called last week and said she she's not gonna make it and I had to scramble scrounge and struggle to get to her and I was at the trade show when I got this news and it was just it was devastating so nah I made it I ended up going and she's still in there, but God has the last say so and she's she's making a recovery. She's coming back. But um yeah, that was that was oh, that was a lot. So now you can see how your how your why is changing. Because guess what? You got other family true. members that I mean, I pray that never happens again, but I mean we all have our expiration date, right? We all have that time. And so right. now the goal should be that when and if you, you ever get that call again, that now you don't have to go through so much to get there. You got the money. That's right. the real why. That's the real why. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, let's You're see. Welcome. Never again will I cause my depression to stop my ability to work and achieve working habits to make money. Never again will I allow a person to put me down and believe them. That's that's deep. That's strong as well. There's a lot of people who come from abusive relationships. I'm not just talking about physically, but emotionally. And they've allowed those relationships 
to get into their head. They allow those lies to become their truths and now they're not working their business. But one thing I also know about those types of relationships, because I've spoken to a lot of people that are in them, is that the reason that they don't leave the majority of the time, maybe not all, but probably 99% of the time is money. Because that person is controlling the finances. Would you, would you agree with that? That that's a lot of times the reason? Just type I agree in the chat. If you agree that a lot of time that people don't leave abusive relationships, whether they're physical, emotional, mental, is because of the lack of money, the lack of resources. And so that's a strong why, to make sure that you are financially secure and independent so that if you are not in a situation that is for your best interest, you could get the heck out of there. And you know how many women are in that situation? Maybe some men too. But these are the prospects that you're talking to. And instead of you talking about them becoming financially independent so they can be in a healthy and safe environment, you talking to them about cruises and all inclusives and saving money on their travel. And they can't even think about that because of the situation that they're in. And so there's this there's this illusion that I think a lot of people have in in this business that everybody is just living and the only thing that's wrong is they don't have enough money to travel. And you're totally ignoring the fact that people have real problems. Like I said, look in the chat and look at these never agains. These are what your things that your prospects that are out there right now are going through, but you talking to them about the wrong thing. Never again will I have to settle, hold on, for the highest deductible on my insurance for the premium to be lower and have damage done and not be able to get it fixed because I can't meet the deductible. Been there, done that. Who hasn't been in that situation that you choose the highest deductible so that you can get the lowest premium? That's like almost everybody. That's a real conversation. Never again will I have my grandchildren and not have adequate groceries in my house to feed them a decent meal. That's real talk right there. Never again will I lose a loved one and they didn't have life insurance and I couldn't even give a dime to help them get buried. How many of you have had family members who were in an emergency and they needed money and you didn't have it? Those are those never again conversations. Never again will I drain my bank account to pay my bills because I lost my job. So, we all should have our two minute story, right? When you meet someone and they ask you what you do and now you have the opportunity to tell them that you're an entrepreneur or you're a travel business owner, I want you to incorporate, you don't have to incorporate all three, but incorporate at least one or two of your never agains into your story. Because that alone will instantly change it from a light and fluffy conversation to a real I could change your life conversation just by changing your story and incorporating one or two of your never against totally going to change the tone of the conversation that you're having with people. Right, so if I wanted to uh, let's say I met Lakeisha somewhere and we're you know we're chit chatting and she tells me she's an educator and then she asked me what I do. And I say, oh, well, you know, I'm a travel business owner and 
I help position people who want to earn extra income on the money making side of the travel industry. And one of the reasons I got started is because never again will I lose my vehicle and have it repossess because I don't have the money to, I can't afford it anymore. And never again will I have my lights get cut off on a Tuesday and can't get them turned back on on a Friday payday. That's what I do. I help people to ensure that their never agains are never agains. Questions, comments, feedback on what I've shared so far. Has anybody had an aha moment just in these first 31 minutes? Constance, go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah, how y'all doing? Um, I've, I've, I've been thinking about this. Like how can I incorporate something to help people? Because I never understood how this business can help people. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm trying, talking fast on my work. Um, so I have been thinking and praying about how can I do that because I've t I I'm starting to talk to people about okay, what is it that you want to do? Because everybody doesn't want you know, doesn't need some people that may think, feel like they only need extra income, but they have these um organizations, these nonprofit organizations and things that they want to donate to or things that just happen in their lives that they want to think about have you know how can I get more um income finances to be able to finance these things without it coming out of my pocket, mm -hmm. right? So that's how I'm starting. I'm starting to think about how I can talk to people. So this is an aha moment for me to be able to incorporate those two, at least two of the three, or even three in my two minute um story, part of my story. Because I'm not. I'm one. I don't like. I like to be. I don't like to be vulnerable. Because you know, I get waterworks and stuff like that. And you know, I, don't, <laughs> I try to stay professional. <laughs> but, but yeah, it was an aha moment vulnerable. for me to start my story. Mm -hmm. yeah, you gotta get yeah. vulnerable. Thank you for sharing, Cliff. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, um, I had an aha moment now that she mentioned that. Um, when you were saying changing lives, um, and I'm sitting here writing these things about changing lives, but I'm waiting for my life to change before I can say I can change your life. And, and you, it's like, okay, well, the whole time, why aren't you believing that you're actually helping people? You know? You can still help somebody because you don't know their progression or whatever. Everybody's situation is different. And this is a life-changing opportunity. So I was going to comment and say, well, uh, we're, uh, you know, just starting out or just, you know, getting into the business. Uh, one, I guess, uh, hurdle is how can I say that if I don't believe it? Right. And then you're sending messages about changing lives. But I actually answered my own question because why not say it and speak it into existence while somebody else can change their situation? Exactly. So that was a, a, a aha moment um, when you said that and you made us rephrase it because I actually court myself because there is no consequence to something that you never had, you know. But something that you you will never do, the more you ask that to me, the more I find it. There you so go. That's good. That is part of the progression of uh, this staying tuned in, you know, staying dialed in. Yep, absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, and it's not about, oh, you know, my life hasn't changed yet. No, it's about your never agains becoming your never agains, right? And then on top of that, you already have the documentation. So you get to leverage a Tanisha Burke story. Now that you know what my never agains are, you get to leverage that. Yes, I've lost two houses into foreclosure. I've had a car repossessed. I've had lights turned off. I've had water turned off. I've had electrical turned off. I've had no meat in my house. There were times I couldn't afford to take my son to the dollar store. This was back when it was a dollar. Couldn't even afford to take him to the dollar store to buy toys as a toddler. That's how broke we were. And now, because of Planet Marketing, I'm a six-figure income earner. So you get to leverage that story. 
uh, so Denise is saying, say the introduction oh, of what I do. I am a travel business owner. This is just what I say. Y'all could tweak it any way you want. I'm a travel business owner and I help people who need extra income position themselves on the money-making side of the travel industry. I am a travel business owner and I help position people who wanna make extra income on the money-making side of the travel industry. And you could switch up the words and you know personalize it, make it sound authentically from you, but that's just what I type in. That's, that's what I say to the people. And it makes them curious because they're like, the money-making side of the travel industry. Notice I didn't say I'm a travel agent. I never, ever identify myself as a travel agent or a travel advisor, not ever, because we're more than that. When you just say that you're a travel agent or a travel advisor, you're only speaking to the IntelliTravel side of the business, the side that only generates one stream of income. Like, why would you do that? Why would you put yourself in a box by just saying you're a travel agent or a travel advisor? And only, only associating yourself with the side of the business that generates one stream of income, which is the trading time for dollars. Because if you don't book travel, you don't get paid, right? But when you say you're a travel business owner, and you help position people on the money-making side of the travel industry, that could be so many things. So many things. Because doesn't the person who give you the massage at the beach in Jamaica, aren't they making money in the travel industry? Doesn't the chefs and the bartenders at the all-inclusives when they're making your drinks and preparing your meals, aren't they making money in the travel industry? Right, the person that checks you in at the resort, the bellhop that brings your luggage up, the people who run the, the, the stores where you buy your souvenirs and stuff, aren't they all making money? The tour guides, the tour operators, aren't they all making money in the industry of travel? So when you say I help position people on the money making side of the travel industry, now to the person that you're speaking to, it's piquing their interest because now they want to know, well, how? Their mind isn't going straight to travel agent. It opens their mind up to something bigger than that. Shaheen. Yes, ma'am. How are you, sir? I am doing great. Um, it's, it's, I think we have mental telepathy because I was about to text you and tell you as soon as I park, I would like to share my story on how you and I connected and what truly got me started in this business opportunity. This is a never again moment that I want everybody to understand once I be able to share my story. Go for it. <laughs> So uh, first and foremost, good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, to my amazing sponsor and three-star director, thank you for this opportunity to speak to everyone. My story is, for those who do not know, um, I was working law enforcement full-time when this opportunity was presented to me when myself and Mrs. Burke had crossed paths. We crossed paths due to another opportunity um, because of my enjoyment for fitness and then it led into this amazing opportunity um the time that this opportunity was shared with me i was in the process of making plans to travel to georgia to see my three older children unbeknownst to me coming home um, from the gym and getting ready for work on an extra duty detail the vehicle i had had a nail in it and caused me to have a flat tire now, I want everyone to understand that in law enforcement, yes, it looks, you know, all nice and shiny, but there's some dark sides to law enforcement, the long hours, not enough income, so on and so forth. This opportunity was shared to me. Um, had a blowout on my vehicle. Got home, parked it in the driveway, and I got a phone call. And the phone call went something like this, and Mrs. Burke can contest. 
afternoon, sunshine. How's everything going? <laughs> so I simply said, um, Miss Tanisha, I will definitely get back to you right now. I have a little crisis. I'm changing my tire in the driveway. And for those that do not know, I am in southeast Louisiana, where in the summertime, it gets extremely hot. So in the process of changing my tire, I realized that I had to dip into my savings account to purchase a new tire. But at the same time, I was planning to go to Georgia to see my three oldest children. And I never like to tell them that I'm coming or showing up and not be able to attend because I never want to disappoint my children. It was at that moment, after I got the phone call, by changing the tire and understanding that I had to go into my savings account, that I said, you know what? I prayed for something like this. I was looking for something like this. It may not be the vessel in which I desire for it to come into, but this is an opportunity that I am definitely going to embark on. Fast forward the next day, um, Mrs. Burke had called me back and I said, I'm ready. Just send me the sign up instructions, whatever it is. I'm just diving head first in it. And ironically, after changing my tire, the mail carrier had came and put some mail in my mailbox. And unbeknownst to me, in that mailbox was a brand new prepaid debit card. Uploaded the money and got started. Ladies and gentlemen, do not miss this opportunity. I can share another story with you, but I don't want to um, occupy the time. But do understand, as long as you have faith, one, within yourself, two, within this opportunity, and three, understanding that you have leadership above you, to your left, to your right, and behind you that are going to push you and pull you to the level that you desire, only thing you need to do is take the first step. You've taken that first step. Correction, you've taken that first step. Obviously, you are a business partner on this call this morning, but do understand that your calling, your process is going to take some time. Stay steadfast with it, push forward, and leverage your leadership. Mrs. Burke could tell you, I am probably the most stubbornest Greek director that she has birthed in this opportunity. But I tell you one thing, I will never, ever leave her side. Thank you for allowing me to share, Mrs. Burke, back to you. Thank you so much that you just heard from One Star Director Shaheem Grant. Um, definitely pushing to hit, help him hit two star. Um, but that's it. Notice the conversation had nothing to do with travel. It was a real life situation that he was going through that made him say, I need this opportunity. Not I want this opportunity so I could travel more, but I need this opportunity. I just had to pull money out of my savings to buy a tire. And I'm sure in his mind, he's thinking, I need this money in my savings because I'm about to go see my kids and they gonna want something. <laughs> Right. But instead he had to, you understand what I'm saying? So it's that type of conversation. Who else wants to speak on this? Who else had an aha moment this morning about how you're approaching people and why you're not where you need to be and why you keep getting the wrong people? I said Miss Burke. Yes. So I always talk about travel to people. Um, I never really talk about planet marketing because I don't think people want to do network marketing, but a lot of people on my page travel a lot. So that's what I was focusing on. But then a lot of people now are saying that they want to live financially free and have multiple streams of income. So I'm just going to lead with planet marketing because like you said, it's eight streams of income on planet marketing side and only one stream of income on Intella marketing. I mean, on Intella, Intella travel. So why not just share everything? with everybody. Absolutely. And here's the other part of that, Tanea. Even the people who want to travel, what what's needed to travel? Money. Money. Yeah. <laughs> they need money. You you can't have time freedom if you don't have the money. So where where are you going to get this time to do all this traveling that you love to do if you don't have the money? Because now you got to keep working a job or multiple jobs in order to make the money. So now you don't have the time freedom. Now you have the money and not the time. So it always comes back 
to the money. But then it comes to get to the root is the never again. Christina? Hi. Okay. So I want to share my uh, moments. Um, I've been in this business for a year now. When I first started, of course, I got two people under me and it was close friends of mine that believed in me ever since we were young and always um, um, seen me, you know, with ideas. So they joined on. Um, when I was first going into this, I was basically fo focused on the travel because um I like making people happy with their trips and giving them excitement and joy and letting them see the world. But then I started realizing, even though I already brought two people, I kind of lost the focus of, of the planet and the marketing side of it, that um, it kind of came, kind of came into realization that I want to make people, I want to do more for people. I want to change more for them instead of just having them explore the world. I want to help them grow in life. I want to teach them everything I've learned. And I want to share this abundance of knowledge that I gained with other people. So then I started going really hard on it and focusing more on it and learning how to uh, reach the people that I know would work well with me and had the same vision and views as me. So my aha moment was realizing that um, doing the travel is not going to get me where I want to be. Um, networking, the travel of business is going to get me where I want to be because I seen the flow of the cash flow already being in a year from the travel business. It's nowhere near amounted to the um, the payments, um, you know, the, 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 the just the whole form of how the payment works, um, the compensation plan for Plan Net. And you know what I'm saying? I always saw the compensation plan for Plan Net. And I've watched the Zoom videos when we bring people in. But I've actually started focusing on that now. And now I am trying to calculate that to get where it is I want to be. Because the compensation plan that Plan Net has to offer is nowhere near to Intelli Travel. There's no way you could get that high like you could get in Plan Net. And although I'm still going to run my travel business and, you know, do as well as much, as much as I'm doing because I gain a lot of clientele, but it's not flowing as fast as I want it to be. So now this year that I'm doing, I'm trying to focus on it for the rest of this year and just gain my numbers up so I could be where I want to be comfortably and be able to provide the best service also to my clients. Because as well with the travel business, you got to invest in it. Where are you going to get the money to invest in it from? You know what I'm saying? Well, and so... That was that was my moment. And also, I want to say this, too. I caught myself and I told you this, Tanisha. I caught myself looking for another job. And I said to myself, Christina, what are you doing? You have a business that you can make more than what another part time job could bring. So now I'm just going full speed ahead and try to work that and completely get off of any nine to fives and just make this opportunity be full stream ahead for me. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing, Christina. Woo! I love that. I love that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who else wants to share? Sandra? Tanisha, Sandra, can I say something? Absolutely. <laughs> so, as you know, I had six people under me, two people dropped. I was focusing on the planet marketing side at first, but I didn't know the business. I didn't know the travel business. So, I stopped focusing on the planet side to learn the travel business um because you have to know what you are selling right Absolutely. planet marketing we sell travel um but now that i'm comfortable and knowledgeable on the travel side i'm back to the planet side because i stopped focusing on the planet marketing side because i didn't know the business and so now that I know the business somewhat, I don't know all the business, but now that I know the business enough to say, hey, you know, if someone asks me, well, tell me about the travel side, at least I can tell them about the travel side. But my focus is getting on the planet marketing side because that's where the residual income is. Right. And I'm at four. I'm stuck at four. I'm a bronze builder. I've been stuck there for the past year. I should be a gold builder or better by now, but I had to learn the business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's my story. Thank you for sharing that. Even when I joined this business, for those of you who don't know my story, one of the main reasons why I joined this business is because I was being targeted at my job. And if you've worked in corporate America before, you know when the writing is on the wall, when they start 
writing you up for stupid stuff because they're trying to get their documentation to walk you out. And so I needed to replace my corporate salary as fast as possible. And when I joined the business, I knew I had to focus on the planet marketing side because that was the side of the business that was going to replace my corporate salary. Right now, I still kept my finger on the pulse of everything in teletravel. I still did the training. I still got the certifications. I still went to ITQ. I've gone to CLIA 360 several times. Certified in this, certified in that. I just was not on social media saying, book with me, book with me, book with me, because I didn't want y'all to book with me. I wanted you to partner with me, but I needed to be educated in my product. But my focus was all literally for the first, I'd say six years of this business, my focus has been plan at. But I've always kept my finger. There was nothing you couldn't tell me about in teletravel that I did not know, because that is the product that we sell. So you don't want to go too far to the left where all you're talking about is travel, 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 and you know nothing about planet marketing. You don't want to go too far to the right where all you're talking about is planet marketing and now you don't know anything about the travel because now that that's just as bad if not worse i know there's directors who are so focused on the planet marketing side that they have they can't share anything about intel travel with their downline and to me that's sad when that's the product that you sell this is one of the reasons why i'm going into the ambassador program to be the example of how you can make six figures on both sides of the business, how you could reach the pinnacle on both sides of the business. Be educated in the product that you sell, even if you're only using the travel side to book your own travel. At least you're still educated in it, right? If, if you wanna book a, a, a trip to Disney for your family, go on and get that Disney certification and now put a trip together for you and your family to go to Disney. At least now you can speak intelligently about our product, the training, the certifications. But to do nothing with your product, the product that we're booking $1 billion a year in, did y'all hear that today? We book a billion dollars a year with IntelliTravel. A billion, that's a B. So you gotta be educated in that. Tabitha? Good morning. Thank you, Director Burke, um, for having this meeting. Um, I felt like when I saw it posted, it was speaking to me. Um, many of you guys don't know me, but I have nine kids. And when I started this business, it was part time. As of yesterday, I was officially handed my pink slip for my six figure income. Y'all have nine kids. And wow. so for me, my aha moment is I speak to you right now today. I haven't been 100% into the business. Yes, we've moved quite frequently. We, we've done some things, but I can tell you getting uncomfortable or that comfortable thing that your job will always be there of almost seven and a half years with this business. And I've been in the industry for over 22 years in the business. God made me get uncomfortable. It started with the message that I heard on Sunday about making room, making room for something different. So I sit here today to tell y'all, sometimes it's going to be uncomfortable. Sometimes it's going to be hard. But if you perseverance towards your goal and make your why as strong as you can, because my why has changed. You hear my little ones around here now. It has changed significantly because I got comfortable with my six-figure income. When I say I was comfortable, I was comfortable. I was out here living, tripping, and all of that. That's got to change. Because I can help people. I can be influential to people. I've got to use the gift that God gave me. He blessed me with an eye. You know, so I say, you know, make the time, make a plan. Sorry for the loudness. Make the time, set your plan, make it work for you. But don't let someone handle, hand you a pink slip that you've given your blood, sweat, and tears for X amount of years because your life can change forever. So I'm going to allow this business to fully be engulfed in it and allow my directors, my coaches to fully engulf in me. I'm not looking for another job. 
I told myself that today. I'm not looking for another job. I'm going to engulf myself in this business because I deserve it. Yes. Thank you, Director. Thank you so much for sharing, Tabitha. Director Grant, you said you could speak on this. Let's bring it to the people. Shaheen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I am yeah. here. I just picked up my son from baseball practice. So being targeted at work, once again, um, being in law enforcement, I have made it to the rank of lieutenant, overseeing a shift of 30 plus different deputies, making sure everybody's assigned properly. My situation, I was at home Saturday night, Sunday morning, getting ready to go to work. There was a situation that had taken place. A uh, breach of security had taken place. Long story short, an inmate had escaped on another shift. Not my shift, on another shift. Got called in to an administrative office, was placed on administrative leave. Subsequently, while traveling to Atlanta for Six Figure School, got a phone call from administration that I have been demoted from lieutenant down to deputy and I was going to be suspended for seven days without pay. Mind you, this was not my shift. The person that I sent, my deputy, did his job. This happened on another shift. During this time, while being suspended for seven days without pay, boom, the pandemic hits. I am home for the entire month of March without collecting any income from my plan from my plan A. The beauty about it, ladies and gentlemen, is because the woman behind the screen giving this lecture this morning pushed me to one star directorship. If it wasn't for the income I was making with Planet Market, being the New Yorker that I am, I would have resorted back to that mind frame. But I was able to be home with my two sons, homeschooling them, about to shave my eyebrows off. But because of the income that I was making here within Planet Marketing, on the 1st, on the 10th, and on the 15th, sustained my household before I returned back to my Plan A and still stayed there for an additional six to eight months before understanding that if respect is not served at the table, then it's time to get up. And that's when I turned in my letter of resignation. No, I did not retire. I donated my job back to that law enforcement agency and Planet Marketing has been the way ever since. So ladies and gentlemen, do understand this opportunity is real. This opportunity is here. And as long as you stay focused and if you've been here and have gone through the global pandemic, it makes no sense to give up on your business. Stick and stay to get your pay. Push as hard as you can for as long as you can. And trust and believe everything is going to work out. Back to you, Mr. Burke. Thank you so much. And I'm glad you shared that, um, Director Grant. Some people are focused on what's going on now and you got to focus on your future, right? It's some people are just really comfortable right now. And so when you're having these I can change your life conversations and Tara, this is this is for you because you're like, how do I change? You know, how do I right this wrong of how I'm approaching people? It, it just starts with your conversation. And some of you have great your network of people are doing well they may already be making six figures, right? So you're like, ah, oh, they're doing, and so they come into the business and they're, you know, they, they're excited about the travel. Why? Because they have the money where they could take advantage of the perks and the discounts, whatever. So they're not motivated, but it's really about talking to them about the what ifs. Well, what if you lose your job? I think most people have lost the job, whether they were fired or laid off or the company closed. I think most people have experienced one of those three at some point in their life. So it's about bringing those, having those types of conversations. Okay, you making six figures, but is it residual? No, 
This is why we have people who are physicians and attorneys in the business, because they understand that basically they're in a self-employed situation. And if they stop doing, they stop eating. So it's also preparing people for the what ifs and showing them the bigger side of things. Okay, so step one into changing the way you've been doing things is identifying your never agains and tweaking your story about what you do to include one or two of your never agains. That's step one. Because when you first meet someone and y'all talking to strangers, getting to know each other, the two things that they want to know is how do you spend your time and how do you make your money? So when it comes to how you make your money, now you have the opportunity to share your quick story, your quick two minute story and include one or two of your never agains. So that's the conversation. That, that's your, off, your offline stuff, right? But now let's talk about online because a lot of us were building online. The thing you gotta do is look at your social media. Is your social media talking about travel? Or is it talking about the first slide of our planet marketing presentation, which is time freedom, personal freedom, financial freedom, multiple streams of income, residual income, leaving a legacy for our family. And I'm not saying get rid of all of the travel stuff and just focus on the freedoms and the multiple streams of income and all of that, but I'm just saying have some balance with it. Because if all you have is travel, travel, travel all down your timeline or your, your news or your, your personal page, then it's no wonder you're attracting people who want to book travel. That's, that's what you're putting out there. So that's what they're going to gravitate to. But guess what? The same thing will happen if you talk about freedom. Then now you're going to attract the people who want freedom. Now, me personally, I have a travel group on Facebook, Lux Platinum Travel LLC. That is my Intella Travel group. All I talk about in that group is travel. So it is very rare that you will see travel on my personal page. I keep it in the group for the people who are interested in travel. And I keep my personal Facebook page, I operate that page as that's me, Tanisha Burke, the entrepreneur in the travel industry, helping people position themselves on the money making side of the travel industry. That's what I show on my personal page. Now, every once in a while, I, wear, I will share a post from my travel group to my personal page every once in a while. And I'm very selective about that. But that's not constantly. That's rare. Because I want my personal page to be the page where I attract people who want freedom, people who want more out of their life. So that would be the next step, Tara, is you got to change your page. And you got to put out on your page what you're looking for. So all right, let's do another exercise together. If I was to ask your best friend, give me five words to describe you, what would those five words be? Five adjectives to describe you. What would those words be? I want everybody to write that down. And once you write it down for yourself, I want you to post it in the chat so we can see. You're welcome, Eunice. What are the five characteristic words that your best friend would use to describe you? And then once you write them down for yourself, please share in the chat, because this is going to help all of us.
All right, so let's see. I see strong. I see honest, empathetic, determined, funny, compassionate, believer, loyal, stubborn, resilient, cheerleader, smart, thoughtful, generous, ambitious, de dependable, nurturing, enthusiastic, caring, loyal, trustworthy. Okay, so now here's the next question. If I was to go on your personal Facebook page right now and ask your followers, give me five words to describe you, will they come up with any of the five words that your best friend would have chosen? If the answer is no, just type no in the chat. If the answer is yes, type yes in the chat. Can I go to your Facebook page right now and see that you are loyal? Can I see that you are strong? Can I see that you are encouraging? Can I see that you're compassionate? Can I see that you're dependable? Can I see that you're ambitious, that you're a hustler, that you're God-fearing, that you're creative, that you're resilient, that you're goal-oriented, that you're kind? Can I see those things by going to your Facebook page? And so for those of you who said no, then you got some work to do because people do business with people who they know, like, and trust. And so on your personal page, it should not be all about business, nor should it be all about travel, nor should it be all about planet marketing. You're not one dimensional. You just prove that by the words that you put out there. So you have to show that you are multidimensional, that you're a family person, you're an entrepreneur, you know, you're a daughter, you're a son, you're a father, you're a brother, whatever. You got to show all of that. Can anybody on here who doesn't live with me tell me what's the name of my dog? Anybody know my dog's name? Just Skyler. 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 How I just forgot that off the top of my head. And I was just saying, and I, when I came out, I said, there goes Skylar Barkin. How I, and she got Charlie old toys. <laughs> right? Yes. Right? So why it's important that my followers on Facebook know that Skylar is my dog. I'm not just partner with me, partner with me, partner with me, or book with me, book with me, book with me. I have a life outside of entrepreneurship. Skylar, Skylar runs the house, right? So my people feel like they know me, not that they just know me, they feel like they know my family. Anybody following me, look, there goes Skylar kissing Andy, you see that, right? Anybody who, who's following me, they know that my husband's name is Andrew. They know that my son's name is Jace. They know that one of my favorite pa places to be in my house is on the Lanai or in the Diva Den. They know this. Why? Because I put enough of myself out there for them to know. They know I like to grill. And the ones who really follow me close know that my Blackstone griddle is called Big Betty. Right? So you got to put this stuff out there. Amira? So I just like I was literally just thinking about this because you know that like my situation right now, I, I spend a lot of time at home and I'm sitting there thinking about, you know, this is still a home-based business, right? So I shouldn't have to go out looking for people all the time, right? And, you know, this is still a home-based business. It's a relationship business, but it's home-based. So I should be able to work and attract people from home. And I was trying to figure out, well, how, how do I do it? Like, what do I share? What do I do? 
um, what part of myself do I share? Cause I'm still kind of, kind of funny about that. And then just going through this list, there's no way that I can, that I and don't have a way to even share a meme or share a post or something, customize something, a thought or a feeling that could reflect me being loyal or stubborn or resilient or, you know, a mother or whatever, more than just like, I don't have to search. It made me just it opened my eyes to the content that I actually could be putting out there that doesn't have to be overthought. You know what I mean? Because I, I tend to overthink. So this this is actually you bringing that up is actually just that's one of your aha moments for me, because I literally was sitting this morning like, well, how am I supposed to do this consistently from home until my situation improves where I'm actually able to be out and about more? So mm -hmm. just thank you for touching in on that. Like that, that was really helpful. Just that Absolutely. exercise. Absolutely. Absolutely. And here's the other thing. Does anybody on here just type me in the chat? Does anybody on here follow or watch some type of reality show? I know some of them are ratchet. I know, I know. Okay, Kim said me. Thank you. Amanda said me. Benita said me. Terriana, me. Okay, a lot of you do. There's nothing bad about it if you do. I'm trying to make a point. The point is. Ask yourself, why do you watch them? Because it's interesting to see how other people live. That's why we watch it. We want to see what they got going on. Because maybe our lives are a little boring. And, you know, we, we know some of it is scripted, yeah. But make your personal Facebook page your reality show. Like, I know nothing about homeschooling. Amira, you homeschool your kid. It would not, I would love to see a 30 second video of what it's like to homeschool a kid. That would make me want to follow your Facebook page more just to see what that looks like. Cause I don't do that, never done it. You know, the small part that I had to do during COVID, I was like, oh, heck no, right? But what does that look like to homeschool three teenagers, right? That could be something that you share that would make people want to, the whole point is to get people to follow you because they like you, because they're interested in your life. It's exciting. You're showing them the lifestyle so that when you do the occasional business post, inviting them to take a look at your business opportunity, they feel like, oh, Jenna is someone that I know, like, and trust. I know about her husband and her family and her kids and stuff like that. And let me take a look at her travel business because I feel like I know her because I've been following her reality show through her Facebook page, through her social media. Because I guarantee you, any of those reality shows that you're watching right now, if someone in that show said that they just started a home-based business, come check it out, you would go check out to see what it was. You would go check out, you'd be curious enough to go see what it was. Am I lying? You would check it out. So I'm just saying, now it's your reality show. Show people that you're exciting, you're fun, you're energetic, you got this going on right? You're funny. And then when you show that you have a business opportunity, some of those people are going to be like, okay, let me go take a, a look. Why? Because they're going to know you're not a scammer. Because they've been following your reality show. They know you're a real person. You got real issues. You're a homeschooling mom. You have pets. You're, 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 you volunteer. You like to garden. You like to cook. You just bought a house. You just moved. You're into motorcycles. They know this stuff about you, so that's going to make them more inclined to take a look at your business opportunity, whether it's from a post or whether it's from you prospecting them directly, saying, hey, I see that, you know, you, you travel a lot. I saw you and your family just got back from Disney or whatever. Have you ever thought about becoming a travel business owner so that you could do more of what you love and earn income? 
And if they've been following you, now they're gonna be like, no, but you, you know, I'm interested. Let me take a look at it. Cliff? Thank you, Director Burke. Um, this is just a great meeting. I'm glad that we're having it. Um, another thing that uh, is not changing the will. I love the fact that it's a duplication. Um, you know, you make it your own, but you have to have a mixture. So I'm not that the best of doing all the things that I see everyone else doing or know how to do the things that they do on TikTok. But the one thing that I can do, I can duplicate and I can be creative within um, with within guidelines. So that is something that I love that we can do as business partners. We can share information and that we can share and we share ideals um, along with not trying to recreate the will because it's like, uh, what's that drum line? One beat, one sound. And as uh, Director Bert Andrew says, doing something one time and making you know, um, getting that habit and just instilling that, doing something one time, you can make residual income off of doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not as difficult as you may feel, you know, as it may frighten um, some introverts or just some people that's not social media inclined. So um, I just wanted to, bring, you know, mention that or just bring that out because it has helped me um, get out of my shell, and I thank you uh, both, uh, Director Burke and uh, B A B. <laughs> thank you so much. Absolutely, thank you for sharing. Now I'm gonna real quick, and I'm not gonna go through this um, too much, but I'm just gonna show you all the three peaks that I do. And you all can get this from the Jaffe 2.0 training video. It's in our um, Team Lux Platinum group, Jaffe 2.0, and it's also on my YouTube channel. So you can take a screenshot of this, but to go watch, I encourage you to go watch the actual training video, Jaffe 2.0. Ah, sorry. Jappy 2.0, just as peak interest. And I just wanna briefly just pull up the slides of the three different peaks. These are the only three that I use and I've been using the same peaks for my time that I've been in planet marketing. I do not go outside of these peaks because they fit every situation. This first one is gonna work for your cold market. You do not know these people. You just met them at the grocery store. You just met them at a vendor event. They were sitting next to you on a, on a flight. You don't know, you don't have any rapport built with this person. You just met them at a party, you're chit-chatting. And it's very simple. Like I said before, when you first meet someone, two things always come up. How do you make your money and how do you spend your time? So once you know what people do for a living, now you can peak them. Do you keep your options open to making additional streams of income outside of what you currently do as an educator, as a real estate investor, whatever it is? Do you keep your options open in terms of making additional streams of income outside of being a barber? Do you keep your options open in terms of making additional streams of income outside of driving Uber? Do you keep your options open to making additional streams of income outside of working here at Applebee's. No matter what they do for a living, you're just asking them as a planet marketing rep, do you keep your options open to making additional streams of income? It's a simple yes or no. Because again, we're looking for the people who are looking for us. So if they are not keeping their options open, then you're done. That's the end of the prospecting. Now you can just share with them your travel agency card and say, hey, if you're ever planning a trip, please give me the opportunity to book it. Any questions about options open? Thank you. Shamika just shared the link to the YouTube video of the Jappy 2.0 training in the chat. Thank you, Shamika. Okay, no questions about this. Y'all got it. Everybody got their pictures. Simple, easy, straight. Is this easy? If you find that this is an easy way to peak, 
please type easy in the chat. Because a lot of you are overthinking peaking interest. Yep, look at all the easies. Yeah, that's easy. Of course, you could do that with anybody. When you're going to get your pedicure, ladies, or your manicure, you could ask the nail tech this question. Fellas, when you're sitting in the barber chair, you can ask this question to your barber. Parents, when you're talking to your kids' teachers, guess what? You can ask them this question. It's easy. Everybody could do this. It's just a question. Okay, so let's look at the second one. This one is for your warm market. These are the people you know. You have rapport with them. You know what's going on in their household. You know you've been to their house. You know who their kids are or what ages their kids are. You know who's about to get a divorce. You know who just got married. You know who's pregnant. You know what's going on. You know that the car just died. You know that they're renting an apartment. You know that they live in a house. You know what's going on with these people. And so once you know what's going on with them, the next thing to ask yourself is, what's keeping them up at night? What's keeping them up at night? Is it that they have a child that's getting ready to graduate high school and they don't have any money for college? Is it that they have a parent who is sickly and has a lot of medical bills? Is that keeping them up at night? Is it that they just got laid off? Is that keeping them up at night? Is it that they're going to through a divorce or they just got divorced? Is that keeping them up at night? Is it that they're tired of that two hour commute that they have? Is that keeping them up at night? Is it the credit card debt? Is it the lack of sleep because they're working two jobs? Is that keeping them up at night? Is it the fact that they told their son that they couldn't pay play football this season because they couldn't afford the fees? Is that keeping them up at night? Is it the fact that they just got a letter from the rental office saying that the rent is going up and they were already struggling? Is that what's keeping them up at night? Or is it the fact that they got a letter stating that the Real estate taxes went up and now their mortgage payment is going up. Is that keeping them up at night? Is it the fact that they can't buy their prescription drugs or they're having to choose between purchasing prescription drugs and groceries? Is that keeping them up at night? What's keeping them up at night? That's where you use this peak. That's where you... Hey, Cliff, listen, I know you're working two jobs. Two jobs are for two people. I know you have kids. If I could show you how to earn some additional income from home so that you can quit that second job and spend more time with your family, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? Cliff is not going to say, sure. no, I'm good. <laughs> I like working two jobs. He ain't going to say that. I'm making the peak about him and his situation and what's keeping him up at night. And write this down, y'all. No one says no to something that's in their own best interest. So if you want to get a yes from people to take a, taking a look at the opportunity, then all you have to do is peek them with something that's in their own best interest. We'll get to that, Carmen. And it's in the training video. Find the need and meet it. Find the hurt and heal it. Find the problem and solve it. If you can identify someone's nightmare, then you can sell them their dream. 
If you can identify someone's nightmare, then now you can sell them the dream. And I remember being at an event And Mr. Bradley said, the reason why you're struggling to build, he was talking to the crowd. He said, the reason why y'all are struggling to build your business is because you're selling travel agencies and I'm selling the dream. Well, how do you sell someone their dream if you don't know what their nightmare is? Why? And the reason why you don't know what their nightmare is, is because you're not having that real, I can change your life conversation with them. You too busy talking about trips. I recently enrolled my childhood best friend and I was doing her business launch. And so she was welcoming her guests and sharing her story. And she said to her guests, Tanisha told me about this opportunity when she first joined almost eight years ago, but all I heard was travel agent. And as a single mom who was struggling to pay her rent, I didn't see that it was for me. All all she really heard was travel. She didn't hear about the seven streams of income that could change her life and being able to leave a legacy and being able to make some extra income from home so she didn't have to wait tables after working all day as a teacher. She didn't hear that. Whatever my approach was with her was wrong. And all she heard was booking travel or travel. That's all she heard. Had I approached her with this, knowing that she's an educator and serving tables at night, if I would have approached her with this almost eight years ago, I would have had her eight years ago in this business. Anybody just have an aha moment with that? I had an aha moment when she said it. I was like, man, I was really messing this up in the beginning. But you don't know what you don't know. But man, hearing her say that, I'm like, wow. If I just would have changed what I said to her and spoke to what she needed and spoke to her nightmare that she was living as a single mom, I would have had her. Just like that. On the marketing side, no less. She would have came in focused on planet marketing because I would have been selling her her dream. But I didn't know. When you know better, you do better. So by the time y'all get off of this training today, y'all shall all be doing better and hitting your next promotions because you're changing what you're saying. Amira? So I've actually been um, putting that in action more, focusing on um, the uh, m- the financial benefit versus the travel. And I'm actually dealing with somebody right now, a prospect um, who is literally living in a nightmare. And um, her decision is is has been to not join the business and to pursue a different avenue that's not income producing when um, starting the business, you can do both. Mm-hmm. Um, so, because most of the people who started this business are doing it part time, mm-hmm. and she was concerned about her confidence and you know if she can actually convert. And I just had to message her because this is more than just making people travel agents. Like she, I think her mind is saying, I can't get nobody to be a travel agent right now. I can't even think about travel. So there's no way that I'm going to be able to convince somebody to be a travel agent. Right. But it's not that. Right. So I messaged her again um, and I invited her to your presentation at 8 p.m. tomorrow and I'm just, or on Tuesday, and I'm just waiting for her to respond because I really feel like um, the value in it is much more than becoming a travel. She can't, she's she's sleeping on the floor. Mm. There's no reason why she should be thinking about anything that's not income producing at this moment. She's living her nightmare. 
And so now I'm just like really hoping that she, but I also can't want it more for her than she wants for herself. Right. So I have to also accept that when it comes to the prospecting thing, but maybe she didn't look at it like this. Right. So that's why I think it's worth the additional exposure with you, you giving your perspective and how you've been helped with it. So absolutely. I, just wanted to share that. I mean, the fact that she's sleeping on the floor, that's the peak. That's the conversation. It's her nightmare. If I could show you how to earn some additional income from home so that you can have some stable living arrangements and not be sleeping on somebody's floor. Is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what we're selling. We could be selling ink pens. And at that point, all she would want to know is, Amira, how many ink pens do I need to sell so I can stop sleeping on the damn floor? Show, pick the mirror up and show people their reality of what they're truly living. Because some people are confused. They, they, they put them, and I think it's more of a self-preservation to protect themselves is they kind of ignore their reality and make it out to be something that it's not. And sometimes we have to put smack them in the face with their reality. You are sleep as a grown adult, you're sleeping on the floor. We need to fix that. It's self-sabotage. It's a self-sabotage. Absolutely. And guess what, Amira? If she don't get it, if she still don't get it, you do that is someone you do not want on your team. If they're not intelligent enough to fight for their own survival, for their own quality of life, would you want them on your team anyway? I wouldn't. You're not who I'm looking for. I want like-minded people, not people who think the opposite of me, All right? Erica, I see your hand. Um, thank you both for this, um, for this time. It really was needed, and I really have a lot of aha moments. But I have a new business partner, and I already know, like, you know, what her need is just from knowing her. But she's a mother. She's a single mother of seven children, um, seven young children. And she got into the business and I feel like she got into the business um, on for the travel part of it. Um, but since she's got in, it's been really difficult for me to um, get her going, even anything that to do with onboarding. And she's like, I think I, you know, jumped the gun. I think that this is, you know, I'm too busy for this. So how do I even get to a point where I can have, like, get her to understand that this can be life-changing for her and her, her children and her family? I know that she's a hustler just by nature. And so it's just, I'm, I'm really struggling with even have, being able to get to have that conversation with her. And then when I do, what do I say? You ask her for her three never agains. Okay. Ta-da! <laughs> you overthinking it. You ask her for her three. Her mindset is not where it needs to be. So you got to bring her back to where it needs to be. Ask her what her three never agains are. And with seven children, I'm sure she has several. Okay. Thank you. And that's it. It's just that simple. Once she tells you those three never agains, now she's in a different place emotionally and mentally. Because now, here's what, here's the thing. When people go through a never again, like something as traumatic as having your car repossessed, like I, I remember being on my second floor, looking out at the window and seeing that truck lift my grand am up and hauling it away. I remember that feeling and I was devastated. I loved my vehicle. I was devastated. I'm like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna, and I live in a place where there's not easy, you know, public transportation. I'm like, oh my God, I was devastated. And so even just now sharing that with you all, about that moment of looking down and seeing my car being taken away and and I was humiliated. I was humiliated. 
I was devastated and humiliated and embarrassed. Just sharing that with you, all of those emotions came back up for me. That is a horrible feeling for someone to take a vehicle from you that you've worked so hard to get, a vehicle that you need to support your quality of life. And they just came and take it, took it because you couldn't afford it no longer. So just bringing, what happens is when we go through a traumatic experience like those never agains, when we come out of it and on the other side of it, we don't want to relive it. So we put it in a shelf somewhere in the back so that we like it. It's almost like it never happened, Erica, because it was just that traumatic. And that's our defense mechanism to protect us. So when you force someone to now comment, yes, com compartmentalization. But when you force someone to go back to that dark place, now you're having the real I can change your life conversation. Does that make sense, Erica? Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you so much, Erica Burke. You're welcome. Another way to get to the another thing about um, the feeling the need is so many people are so beat down from the day to day struggle that they stop dreaming because now they've been adulting for so long. Adulting has like beat them over the head. They stop dreaming. And you gotta have a dream. You have to have something that you want from this business to make you even wanna fight for something more. This is why Mr. Bradley has these events in these, you know, five-star, resorts and hotels and on yachts and stuff like that to get people to dream again because we get beat down from the struggle of surviving that we no longer dream and so if you try to bring someone into this business and they don't have a dream they're not going to do anything and you guys keep bringing in the same people who don't have anything that they want And so they come in and they do nothing. And you're wondering why? Because there's nothing that they want. They don't have a dream. So what are some things that you could do to help people dream who, these are for the people that you have identified who they appear to not want anything. They good. Here's the question. If you had unlimited income and unlimited time, what would your life look like? Y'all write that down. If you had unlimited income and unlimited time, what would your life look like? And then you're gonna ask them these specific questions. Number one, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? If you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Again, we're talking about your ideal life. What is the first slide of our planet marketing presentation? Design your ideal life through time freedom, personal freedom, and financial freedom. Sometimes in the presentation, we tell, we tell the guests, close your eyes. Close your eyes, imagine having time freedom, imagine having, this is what you should be doing with your prospects. The ones who you've identified don't appear to want anything. I agree, Janine, that's why I'm doing, this is gonna help you with that. So again, you're asking people, if you had unlimited income and unlimited time, what would your life look like? We're, we're, we're getting them to design their ideal life. So the first question is, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Where would you live? Second question, if you could build your dream home in that destination, what type of features would it have? And get them to be specific. Is, is it by the beach? Is it by the lake? Is it in the mountains? Is it in the desert? 
Is it on a farm? Do you have a pool? How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? Is it a lot of land? Do you have a basketball court? Do you have a game room? Do you have a theater room? Get them to be specific. You have to get these people to dream. Now, I don't need to do this with everybody. I only do this with the people who I feel like it's plug, pulling teeth, trying to find out what the need is, what the want is, what the dream is. So I don't need to do this for everybody. Just those types of people. Tara, for you, you might need to do this for the six figure, the people, your friends, your network of people that's making six figures that you bring in the business and they don't want to do anything. This is a perfect yes, question for them. Okay. Okay. Because they're making six figures, but they got to work for it. What happens when you don't have to work? Now what? What are you doing, right? So what type of home are you building? And be specific. And call people out on their nonsense. Sometimes I'll get people to say, um, my dream home, I want four bedrooms. I'm like, four bedrooms? What the heck you gonna do with four bedrooms? Four bedrooms? I just told you, you had unlimited income and unlimited time. And the best you could come up with is four darn bedrooms. And then they got the nerve to say two bathrooms. I'm like, oh Lord. So now if I come and visit you, I gotta go down the hall to use the bathroom. We can't have en suites. Come on, you got unlimited income. At least give me eight bedrooms and 10 bathrooms. And then they're going to tell me, but I don't want to clean. I just said you had unlimited income. Are you really cleaning your house? Like, seriously, this is the conversation that I have to have with some people because they're just so beat down from struggling to survive that they can't even comprehend this dream life. So call them out on it. Make them dream big. Mr. Bradley always says, it's not that you don't have a dream, it's that you, your dream is too small. Make them dream big. Say, really, unlimited income and you only gonna do four bedrooms? Really? Okay, I need you to do better. You deserve better. You should want more. And understand this, you got to understand the psychology of everything is people tend to, and this again, this is a protection mechanism that we put on ourselves to protect us from the trauma of not having enough. We downgrade our wants to match our income. That's all that is. They have downgraded their wants to match their income, to make them feel better about the fact that they don't have enough money. That's all it is. So you're, you're, you have to kind of break that as part of the conversation and give them say, listen, I'm gonna give you permission. And I say, I literally say those words. I'm gonna give you permission to dream for just a moment. Is that okay? And I make them say, yeah, that's okay. And I said, if you had unlimited income and unlimited time, what would your life look like? And I'm going to ask you some specific questions. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? And you know what? Some people say, well, I like where I live right now. And I'm like, oh, here we go. I'm like, all right, well, now you can have a, a, a vacation house somewhere. Where's it going to be? <laughs> like, I got to pull it out of these people sometimes. Some people have never been anywhere outside of their state. And they're like, I've never traveled anywhere. I, I honestly can't tell you where I would wanna go because I've never been anywhere. And I'm like, okay, but you watch TV. Where are some places that you've seen on TV that look like nice places to live? Again, you gotta force them into this conversation. So they're designing this house, you know, I want this, I want that. Sometimes I ask them questions, do you want a pool? Do you want to be by the lake? You want to be by the beach? You know, do you want all one level? Do you want multi-levels? You know, what, what type of thing? You want a dividend? You want you need a man cave for your man? You want, you want a game room for the kids? Like sometimes I have to throw some leads out there for them to grab. And they're like, oh yeah, 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 I want that. I want. Okay, now you could drive your dream car off the lot. What you driving? 
What you driving? And even with that question, some people will, I still hear them say either I'm not into cars or they'll give me something that's not a luxury vehicle. Like I want a Toyota something. And I'm like, I just told you, you had unlimited income and unlimited time. And the, the best you could come up with is a Toyota. Well, I'm not into. Really? And so, again, you have to kind of go deep with the conversation with them and saying the reason why these luxury cars are so expensive is because they're better quality. They're not going to break down on you the next year. Everybody should want a luxury vehicle. How could you not? And if you have unlimited income, you may even have a driver driving your BMW or your Benz or your Maybach, whatever. But you should at least, you deserve to have a quality, luxurious vehicle. You deserve it. So let's go for it. Which one you want? What color? And then I make them tell me the color. What color? Because I need them to visualize exactly what it is. I want them to smell that new car scent. And then the last question I asked them is, how would you spend your time? Because if you have unlimited income and unlimited time, you're not working for anyone. So how are you spending your days? What, what does a day in the life of Janine looks like with all those freedoms? And I'm like, oh man, well I get up and have breakfast, I may go down to the beach and exercise or do yoga or something. You know, I, I'll be able to paint. Cause sometimes I, I ask, I'm like, what are some of your hobbies that you love that you don't have the opportunity to do? Some people like to paint, some people like to dance. Some people told me they would go and take, you know, salsa dancing classes or whatever. They would meet up with friends and travel and, okay, what are some place, where are some places you would travel? And Jenna said, I don't want a car, I want a yacht. I know that's right, Jenna. That's what I'm talking about. Carmen said, I want a jet. That's what I'm talking about. Dream big. Dream big. So once they answer all those questions, then here's the million dollar question. How much income do you need coming in monthly? Now we're talking residual income. How much income do you need coming in monthly to sustain the lifestyle you just described? So I need y'all to write all these questions down because you're going to have to use this to pull out of these people what their dream is. So if you could, if you had unlimited income and unlimited time, what would your life look like? If you could live anywhere in the world. So now we're going to be specific with that. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? If you could design your ideal house and build your dream house, what type of features would it have? If you could drive your dream car, what are you driving? How would you spend your time? And then once they answer all of those, it's how much income do you need coming in monthly to sustain that lifestyle? So here's where it gets interesting. Some people give an astronomical amount, like way beyond what they're currently bringing. Like some people might say, Oh, $80,000 a month. Never shoot that down and never act surprised about that amount. Because do we not have three people making over $100,000 a month? Yes, we do. So $80,000 is not a stretch. It's, it's doable. And those people that are making $100,000 are going to be making $200,000. But if they give you a very, very high number, I want you to say, okay, that's good. That's real good. I want you to ask them a question. Would you agree that in order for us to go after the 80,000, we first need to make enough money for you to cover your existing household expenses so that you could quit your job and focus on going after the 80,000? And they say, yeah. I'm like, okay, so how much money do we need 
for you coming in now to sustain your current household so you could quit your job and work the business full time to go after the 80,000. That's how you get that's how you bring them down without acting like the number that they said is unrealistic because it's not unrealistic, not in the industry of network marketing. It's not it's very doable to make 80,000 a month. But we need to break this down to something smaller that they can chew on and see in their future. Does that make sense? Anybody have any questions on that? Anybody just have an aha moment <laughs> about the conversations, the types of conversations that you should be having with certain people? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so Carmen, the question to bring them down is if they say, you know, 80,000 or 100,000 a month, say, okay, that's really good. That, that's great. Would you agree that in order to go after that 80,000, 100,000, that we first need to get you out of your current job so you can focus on this business full time. So with that being said, how much income do you need coming in monthly to sustain your current household so that you can quit your job, still be able to take care of your current household and now focus on going after that 80,000 or whatever the amount they said full time. So we need to know how much they need to maintain their current. Now they're going to say, 3,000, <laughs> right? 2,000, 4,000, depending on how much they make at their job. They're going to give you a, a much smaller number that is very doable. All right. Does that answer your question, Carmen? So I need y'all to understand the concept of what we're asking. You could tweak the words and say it the way you need to say it, but the concept is to get them to say, how much money do you need coming in monthly right now so that if you wanted to walk away from your job, you could. That's where we're trying to bring them back down to. As opposed to, you know, being surprised that they said 80,000 a month. It might, it very well might take 80,000 a month for them if they got a yacht <laughs> parked, you know, in their backyard, right? So we need to bring them back down. Now, once they share with you how much they need, this is where now I refer back to the income disclosure statement. But the one that I put out that shows monthly income. And hold on, my computer is freezing up. Here we go. So let's close this. And I've shared this every year when the Planet Marketing Income Disclosure Statement comes out. I always take all the numbers and divide it by 12 so that I can see what the monthly income looks like at every level. And that is what I share with, and I do this on three-way calls as well. And so I'm gonna pull it up so you all can see. So let's say the person says, I need $5,000 a month to be able to walk away from my job and work this business full time so I can go after that 80,000 that I need a month. So then I come back here and I always, 99.9% .9 of the time I start at one star director. The only time I will start at gold builder because you have to meet people where they are. So if someone is telling you, for example, they're really just looking to make an extra 500 a month, like that's how low their income source is right at this moment, then I'm gonna start at Gold Builder, okay? But for the people that are working a full-time job and they're already bringing in, you know, two, three, 4,000 a month, I'm starting at, at Director, right? And I typically, for most people, I'm gonna do the one, two, and three star, right? For most people, I'm able to just do the one, two, and three. Now, if they give me some real, real big, big number, then I'm gonna take them all the way down to the big, big number, right? But then I tell them this, okay, a one star director. Well, they don't know what one star director is, so I have to explain that. A one star director is someone who has a team of a minimum 100 people. Keep in mind, that is not 100 people that you have to personally enroll in a business. Imagine you enroll 10 people. Imagine you share the business with 10 people. 
They love it. It makes sense for them. They get started. But then imagine we help those 10 people find their 10 people. That's 100 for you. Or maybe you share the business with 20 people, just like it was shared with you. They love it. It makes sense for them. They get started. But then we help those 20 each find five. Now you have a team of 100. You're a one-star director. Are you following me? And then I make sure that they say yes, because I need them to understand where I'm going. I don't want them confused. The average one-star director is working this travel business 30 hours a week. On average, in 2023, our one-star directors were making an extra $2,123 a month in residual income. Some made more, some made less. What bills could you take off the table right now if you had an extra $2,100 coming in on top of what you're already bringing in from your job? And then I make them tell me what that bill is that they could take off the table. Why do I do that? Well, I do that because I need them to dream of what it's like to take the mortgage off the table, not have to worry about it. I need them, I need them to dream about what it's like to no longer have to worry about paying the rent is covered from your business. Next level, two star. Now your team of 100 travel business owners has grown to a minimum of 300 and that's gonna happen in spite of you. Because think about this, Tiffany, if just some of these 100 people are making money, saving money, traveling the world, do you think they're going to keep this business opportunity a secret or are they going to share it with more people? And guess what Tiffany's going to respond? They're going to share it with more people. And I say, absolutely. The average two-star director is working a business 40 hours a week. On average in 2023, our two-star directors were making an extra $5,931 a month in residual income. Some made more, some made less. And I'm gonna say, Lakeisha, what bills could you take off the table now if you had an extra 5,900 coming in on top of what you're already bringing in from your job? Or is it at this point that you're able to quit your job? I'm bringing them on this journey with me to freedom and putting them in the story so that they don't just understand what I'm saying, but they're understanding and overstanding what I'm saying, because this is the story of their life. Not my life, not what I joined for, not what I want them, what they want. Next level, three star. Now 300 has grown to a minimum of 500. Again, gonna happen in spite of you because people are gonna continue to tell people who tell people who tell people. Average three star director working a business 40 to 60 hours a week on average in 2023. $11,215 a month in residual income. Some made more, some made less. For most people, for a lot of people, this is their best life that they just described. For a lot of people. For some other people that are doing, making six figures already, like Tara's network of people, Tara, you may have to go down to four star for them. Now your team of 500 has grown to a minimum of 1,500 working a business 40 to 60 hours a week, now making $19,734 a month residually. And make sure you stress residual. Mm. Month after month after month. Totally changing the conversation, right, Tara? Totally putting them in a different mind. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right? Now, here's what I say. Here's what I make sure mm -hmm. they understand. I say, okay, all of this money that I'm talking about right here, none of it comes from booking travel. <clears throat> I stress that. Um, none of this money comes from booking travel. All of this money is going to come from you finding like-minded people like yourself who say that they're open to looking at ways to earning additional streams of income. If they're not open to looking, you're not talking because then you'd be selling to them. We don't sell. We educate people on this business opportunity. So... Remember, you still have your IntelliTravel travel agency business. So any money you make booking travel, you're booking cruises, you're sending people to the all-inclusives, you're booking Disney, any money you make booking travel, I want you to look at that as your spending money. That's your petty cash. That's your Manny Petty. I'm going to the mall, going on a shopping spree, right? That, that's that, fellas, I don't know what y'all do with your money. That's that, I'm spending that on cars or electronics or whatever. Let them know, that's petty cash. That's the fun money. 
But the money that you need coming in month after month after month to sustain your household so you don't have to work a job unless you choose to, so that you can have that eight bedroom house on the beach with the blah, 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 with the what whatever in the driveway is gonna come from you doing exactly what we did with you. Find people who are looking to make extra income and share this business opportunity, educate them on this business opportunity. Okay, does that exercise help anybody? Did that give somebody another aha moment of how to have the I can change your life conversation with people? Tara, does that help you? Yes, ma'am, it does. It does. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Tara has a very tough market because her network of people are doing good. They're doing well. But we want to let them know, Tara, why settle for well when wealthy is available? Absolutely. That's a whole different conversation when we talk about instead of having their uh, Mercedes or BMW parked in their driveway, Tara, which I'm sure a lot of your network of people already have, talk, talk yes. about having the yacht parked in their boat slip. Yes. Is that conversation. Anybody have any questions, comments, feedback so far? I'm not even done yet. I'm, a, I'm giving y'all everything I got today. So if you gotta go, it's okay. It's being recorded and it's being streamed in our Team Lux Platinum, but I have more. I'm gonna go into some detail of some things you can do on social media to find so, people. Go ahead, Tara. Let me ask you this. You know, we're talking about this and I guess I keep saying, Ooh, how do I go back and right my wrong? Ugh. Or do I just move forward? Move forward. Move okay. forward, Tara. Because, and the only reason, if this was five years ago, Tara, I would say go back. <laughs> but we're not. We're in momentum. It's too <laughs> late to go back. All you okay. can really do with those people at this point, Tara, go hit directorship. Hit one star. Hit two star. Hit three star. Show them the lifestyle of you hitting these promotions and what you're doing. They're going to be like, wait a minute. They're not, especially your friends, they're not going to want you to leave them. Okay. When you're able to walk away from your teaching job and like, I'm done, I'm retired myself, they're going to wake up and be like, whoa, 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 <laughs> You ain't leaving. Real soul. <laughs> right. So for those people, just, just let them watch. But the new people, now you know how to approach them. Correct. All right. Okay. Anybody have any comments, feedback on what I just went over? I want to go over something else at this point. Yes. I can't hear you. You sound far away. Okay, I think because I have my earbud on. Can you hear me now? Yes. Is that better? Okay, I have my earbud on. Because as soon as you start saying that when life beating you up, just life and is just beating you up like direct the work that I was in, I was having conniptions in the car while I was driving. <laughs> I felt like because okay, age, I'm there. Working all my life. I had my daughter when I was 18. That's all I was doing. My father passed, was the son my mother never had, the brother my the whole nine. I'm just like looking out for everybody. Lifing, beat me up. I'm doing what I got to do, paying my bills, going to work, 40, 40, 40, okay? Just recently, I think, right, like right after the pandemic or something like that, I, my mind, and after I had a couple of one-on-ones with you, um, my mindset started changing. Like, I have to do stuff for myself. I'm not used to doing anything for myself. I'm used to looking out for everybody else. Mm -hmm. and, and life is like, I'm like, okay, God, I'm tired. Breast cancer survivor, why am I here? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay. I'm starting to think like, okay, dream, girl, dream. What was your dream when you was young? What what is it that you want? Mm -hmm. You know, what is what kind of lifestyle do you want to live? You know, what just to be able to go and sit on my porch if I want to, to get in my car and drive, if I want to go visit my sister, get on a plane, like y'all be doing, you know, just live, <laughs> just living life. Life that like that adulting can beat you up. Mm -hmm. If that's all that you know and all that you see and all that you've been told. Yes, exactly. Live it, live it y'all. Live it, y'all. Exactly. And I'm going to give you guys one more um, visual 
that will help you stay focused on the right things as well. I want everyone, and you may need to have this conversation with your prospect who's struggling with what they should be doing. Like, have you ever, has anybody ever spoken to a prospect who they have multiple things going on? They got this business, that business, they, they're doing, like they literally have probably like three or four businesses. Anybody ever speak to a prospect who has had, they got their hands in a lot of pots. They got a lot of pots going. Okay, Shamika said yes. Constance, yes, yes. Yeah, a lot of people do. They have a lot of things going on. And so they're telling you, I don't have time to do this business too because I got this going on. I got that going on. I got this nonprofit. I got this boutique. I'm doing taxes. I'm doing this. I work my full-time job. They're telling you they got all of this going on and they don't have time. They don't feel they have time for this business. This is the conversation that I have with those people to fix all of that. Y'all ready? Pay close attention. I need you to look at your life as a GPS. When you're going to a brand new destination, you get in your car, you start it up, the GPS comes on. What's the first thing that the GPS is asking you for? Y'all type it in the chat. What's the first thing the GPS wants to know if you're going to a brand new destination? Exactly, Shamika. Where are you going? What's the destination? The GPS cannot give you turn by turn directions if it does not know the destination. So when it comes to doing business, you have to know what the destination is first before the business can produce what you're looking for. Like it drives me nuts sometimes when I ask people how much money they wanna make and then they say, well, I don't know what's all entailed with the business to even give you an answer. And I'm like, what? That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. No, you need to know your destination and then we show you how to go get it. You're looking at it all wrong. And so that's why you have to have that, that take, that's why you may need to take some people through that if you had unlimited income, unlimited time, what would your life look like? Blah, 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 blah. How much money do you need coming in monthly to live your best life? And now they give you that, I need $5,000 a month. That's the destination. They need $5,000 a month residually to live their best life. And again, I'm going back to the very first slides of our presentation. Design your ideal life through time freedom, personal freedom, and financial freedom. Get them to give you that monthly number. That's the destination. So now I can come back and say to those people, I understand you have a lot going on but you only have 24 hours in a day. And what you need to do is look at all of those different things that you're putting your time into and ask yourself, which of these, if any, are going to lead me to $5,000 a month residually? And if the answer is none, then you got some decisions you need to be making. because I'm showing you an opportunity that will lead you exactly to what you just said you wanted. Your nonprofit's not gonna get you there. Your tax business is not gonna get you there. Your little boutique you got online is not gonna get you there. Your driving your Uber Lyft is not gonna get you there. Your baking business is not gonna get you there. None of those things are residual and gonna produce what you told me that your best life is. So you need to make a decision. You are gonna keep making a little bit of here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there, or are you gonna put your focus on one thing that you know for certain, and how do we know for certain? Because we already have the documentation. Documentation beats conversation every day of the week. You're able to leverage all of the success that we've had in Planet Marketing. 
that's how you get people to rethink. I had one person, one young lady tell me that she was going to school for social work. And then when I took her through the design your ideal life um, exercise, she wanted to have this big house on the beach, BMW, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, show me one social worker that has that. Just one, I'll wait. And she she had an aha moment. I'm like, you spending all, you going into debt with student loans to become a social worker? The most, they're probably more underpaid than teachers. But yet, on the other hand, you telling me you want this big house on the beach with the BMW. The math ain't mathing. That don't work. So I made her rethink her whole life and what she wanted. That's the I can change your life conversation. Those are the things that you should be, you got to pull these. It's not a travel conversation. Anybody just have another aha moment? <laughs> just with that. <laughs> That's a big one. All right. Moving on, child, moving on. Okay, so we got one more peak to, to discuss, uh, which is the third peak. So we went over the first one. This is the third one. This is for your travel people. They're easy to identify. Hey, Christelle, I know you love to travel. Girl, I saw you just got back from uh, Dubai. It looks like you, you and your friends had an amazing time. Listen, if I could show you how you could do more of what you love and earn income, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? And Christelle, what would you say to that? I'd say yes, it is. Of course. <laughs> She's going to be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, Tanisha. You got to wait for me to travel more and make money? I'm listening. I'm all ears. What you got? So these three peaks. You can use them online and offline. You'll always get a yes. You'll always at least give get people to look at the opportunity because it's about them. It's in their own best interest. It has nothing to do with you. Nobody cares that Violet started a travel business, right? People have life lifing right now. They could care less. But the fact that Violet has something that can help them with their situation, now they're gonna pay more attention. Now they're in, now they're going to want to look at your opportunity for their reasons, not for yours. Amira? First of all, the audacity. Like I, this really is, is so helpful for our posture um, when it comes to us actually speaking to people, because this is stuff that we already know. We already believe that the business can do this for us. And the way that you're breaking it down, like we can really come to people as if we are having a real talk conversation with somebody that we love or somebody that we care about. Like, no, you don't want that. Like, come on. Like, let's be, let's be serious about this because this is a serious conversation. I am trying to show you how I can change your life. I'm already doing it. I'm already in the process of doing it. And for those of us who aren't where we want to be in the business, we can say the person who is pouring into me, coaching me, mentoring me, mentoring me, you have access to this person too. So everything that I'm learning, you're going to learn and we can do, we, as long as you stay in position, you will be successful. And it really is, I think for a lot of us, it's a posture thing. We're not really sure how to do it when we don't currently have it at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I'm really, really just encouraged with this. So I'm really glad just the points that you made, I already know that you communicate like this, but for you to actually make it so that to put it in words that make it easier for us, even with even with these ob objections that they say, because these objections are really just places of fear. Mm -hmm. And how is your fear helping you right now? How is your fear actually helping your situation right now? Because you're actually hiding. And the reality of it is that a lot of people are hiding because they are afraid of what they can't do. Right. What they think they can't do, but then they run into somebody like you who holds up the mirror and they're like, wait a minute, what do you mean you can't do it? 
I did it. I know people who are in your exact same situation who did it and better. So what do you mean you can't do it? This right. is the power of the testimony and the power of the story and just having the posture to say, we have these resources to, to aid you in whatever you might feel like you're coming up short in until you're able to come up on your own. So I just, I just think that what you're saying is really helpful. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. And here's the other part. Turn the fact that you haven't arrived yet into a benefit and not an obstacle with talking to people. Because I also hear people say, oh, well, I haven't made any money yet. I just got started. Or maybe I've been in the business two years and I haven't, I haven't even hit my rank promotion yet. Turn that into the positive. How do you do that? Invite people on the journey with you to freedom. Invite them on the journey with you. Say, listen, I haven't done it yet. You know, my goal is to be able to walk away from my job in two years or whatever. Instead of me complaining about my job, I started this business so that I can do that because never again will I be fired from a job. So I'm gonna put myself in a position to walk away from my job. Why don't you come on this journey with me? We can do this together. We got great leadership, my mentor, and then boom, you edify them. My coach and mentor, Orlando Moore, started this business when he was on the, in the desert of Iraq, single dad. And now my mentor and my coach is making over $100,000 a month. So if he could do that from a war zone, start a business from the war zone, then I think we could do it from the comforts of our house in the United States. Let's do this together. We're going to learn together. We're going to grow together. We're going to help each other together. Right? So that's the conversation. All right. So let's move on to the next phase. What can we do on social media? You should already know what to do with the offline, right? Because I just gave you the three peaks. Listen, never turn, y'all write this down, never turn down an invitation to go somewhere or to do something. Stop saying no to these people. Unfortunately, COVID and being stuck in our house made us very comfortable at home. We, turn, we have turned our home into our oasis when we had to stay there and we couldn't go anywhere. COVID is over. You can leave your house. It's safe. So when people invite you to a baby shower, to brunch, to dinner, to a movie, for drinks, I want you to start saying yes, 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 yes. I'll be there. I need you to start going because these are now opportunities for you to meet new people and have these I can change your life conversations. You got to go. Stop saying no when people are inviting you to go and do things. Say yes, 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 yes. You're a business owner. That's an opportunity for you to market your business. Right? Those of you, um, other things that you can join, Toastmasters, your local chamber of commerce. This puts you in a position to network with other people and other business owners. You can go on Facebook and look for events that are happening in your area. These festivals, these networking events. Join them. That puts you in a position to network with other people. But let's talk about online. Most of us are in a ton of groups, but you're working these groups all wrong. So I'm going to give you some things that some tweaks and adjustments. Let, no, let me, let me go back. Scratch what I just said. I'm not saying that you're doing anything wrong because you may have gotten some people. But what I'm going to offer you is a different way of doing things to get better results. Does that sound better? That's, I cleaned that up real nice, didn't I, Erica? <laughs> you're not doing anything wrong. I'm just going to give you some tips that you can implement to help you get better results than what you've been getting. Yes. All right. Here we go. 
So one of the first things that you should do when you identify a great group that you like is you got to introduce yourself. Some of you are just joining groups and nobody knows that you're in it. So first of all, let's talk about the kind of groups you should join. Well, you should join groups that you have a passion for. Don't just join a group because there's a lot of people. Join groups that you have a passion, things that you have a passion or interest for because that will allow you to engage in that group naturally and not forced, right? So if you love gardening, join some gardening groups. If you love decorating, join some decorating groups. If you love cooking, join some cooking groups. If you love motorcycles, join some motorcycle groups. If you love music, join some music groups. If you love if you love books, join some book club book club groups. If you're a single parent and and you love being a single parent and you want to connect with other single parents and see what they're doing, do that. If you're a homeschooling mom or dad, join homeschooling groups. If you're into taxes, join some tax business group owners, whatever. Whatever it is you have a passion for, for join groups that are with your passion so that you can engage organically now join groups that are highly active so look to see how many posts are they kicking out a day is is this a live active group or is it a dead stale group join a group that has multiple posts a day so that you know people are actually engaging in that post Right. If you love dancing, join some dance groups. If you're getting ready to or positioning yourself to even buy a house, you don't have the down payment, your credit sucks or whatever, then join some groups of people who are looking to buy to position themselves to buy a house. So whatever that is. Right. And then you want to look for an active group. OK, so next is to introduce yourself. And this is where this is going to be the beginning. And this is probably the most important part of working groups is the introduction because if nobody knows you're in there then what's the point so you always want to include a picture of yourself why because we want people to know we're not scammers we're real people that's the biggest i got somebody on facebook now trying to be me created a fake profile and then got the nerve to be jumping in my people's boxes talking about bitcoin y'all know that ain't me <laughs> All right, so you do a picture of you doing or participating possibly in whatever the topic of that group is. So if you're joining a gardening group, then can we get a picture of you in your garden? Can we see your garden? We don't just wanna see your garden, we wanna see you in your garden. We don't just wanna see a picture of some food that you cooked. We want to see you in the picture with the food that you cooked. All right. Then you do your posts. Always be polite and thankful that they accepted you into the group. Your name, where you live. I'm a stay at home mom and a full time entrepreneur in the sexiest industry in the world. Don't say you're a travel business owner. Don't say you're a travel agent. Can, can we just give them a soft little tease? We want to just tease them. We want to conjure up questions so you don't give it all. I recently took up gardening while working to create a backyard oasis during the pandemic. I could really use some ideas on what plants would do well in an area that does not get a lot of sunlight. Any suggestions? This is your call to action. The call to action has nothing to do with who's looking to start a travel business, travel more. No, the call to action should have to do with what the group is about. That's what you want to do. Let's look at another introduction. You went to bikes, you went to Harley, ton of Harley groups. Hey everyone, thanks for accepting me in the group. My name is Mike and I live in Boston. I've worked as a mechanic for the last 15 years, and I also help position people on the money-making side of an $8 trillion industry. Again, we ain't say travel because we want to pique interest. We want people to ask questions. 
My fiance and I recently completed a road trip from Boston to Virginia on our Harley Davidson trike, and we had an amazing time. We're looking to ride down to the Carolinas next month and looking for any suggestions on places to visit along the way. Easy. So now you're gonna get people who respond to this. They're gonna be welcoming Mike into the group. Some people are gonna to wanna to know what this $8 trillion industry is. And then other people are gonna be responding with places that he should be visiting on his bike ride to the Carolinas. Either way, he's getting engagement. That's the main thing with social media, engagement. So here's the one that I did. I joined a book, uh, a group for women who love to decorate. Why? Because I was building a house. Hello, divas. Thanks for accepting me into the group. My name is Tanisha and I'm a mom of one son married and a full-time entrepreneur in the sexiest industry in the world. I'm building a home in Davenport, Florida, which we will be closing on in 20 days. My decorating style is modern with a splash of glam. I travel a lot, hint, hint. So I'm looking for ways to incorporate things from my travels into my home design. I love to entertain and I'm looking forward to getting to know all of you and getting some ideas for my new home. Is anyone else building a new home and having to decorate an entire house? So it's me with pictures of the home that I'm building and what it's going to look like when it's done. Right? Anybody having an aha moment right now? with how they should be working groups. Come off mute and tell me about it. I wanna hear what, what you're thinking as, as I'm showing this to you. This is Tabitha. Hey, I, Tabitha. Think the, I think the biggest thing for me or what we failed to realize is we don't always utilize what we have mm -hmm. either because we don't think about it because all we hear is like travel, travel, travel. But when we're forced into it or giving the examples like you have so graciously done and taking the time to do so, which and we appreciate it, is now is our time to shine. Um, we're in momentum. Like I think about all these groups that I'm in and I talk to, I have engaged in the scores that are wonderfully and excellent, but I don't utilize it to the best of my ability. Um, I can say that now, like I'm going through these groups, I'm like, man. I talk to a lot of people and a lot of people have been checking on me since I'm no longer there. Like I have the engagement and it's now I've got to utilize it. And why didn't I do it before? So I'm having a lot of questions in my head, but it's now time to go get it. I, I'm, I'm saying to you guys that haven't been faced with it. It's now time for us to go get it. We've been given the nuggets. So now let's go get it. Let's go make this happen for ourselves. Let's go make it happen for our families, whatever that it is, let's go get it. I'm pumped, I'm excited, I'm here. I love it, I love it. Thank you, Tabitha. Lakeisha, I see your hand up. I mean, myself, yeah, um, definitely <laughs> with this group, definitely aha moment director. <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm in, a, and I've been joining a lot of the garden groups this year race recently, cause that's something I'm getting back into. And I definitely um, need to go and do some intro intro post in my group yes absolutely let people know you're in there stand out from the trolls that are just trolling the groups right and now you become the it girl in the group that's good that's good amira okay so when it comes to that because i'm a part of a lot of groups and i always talk about um engaging in my groups and um relating to people and things like that, the comments and starting posts and things like that. But I, I don't, I have not actually went and made the post introducing myself. So I'm going to go, go back to the groups and see, oh my gosh, I've been in here for so long and I realized I haven't introduced myself, but um, how does it, how does it not sound like uh, it's a form of self-promotion now when I put the travel part in there? Because I have you're talked about travel. travel. You're not putting the travel part in there. You're 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 talking about whatever the group is about. Just introduce okay. yourself. Don't oh, you're overthinking it. You're just introducing yourself. That's it. Introduce yourself. Okay. You can't make new friends without an introduction. Okay. This is all about right. making new friends and having um, connecting with new people. That's it. 
So get the prospecting part out of your mind. When you do it this way, it's going to happen organically. Well, I wasn't doing thinking the prospect part, but just but now I'm reading what you said, and you just said in a sexist industry in the world, you didn't say exactly. I'm a travel business owner. You just right. identified the industry that you're in. So I see that now. Okay, yeah. All right, that answers it. Thank you. Yep. All right. Now, expand your network. So build rapport. Respond to everyone. If someone took the time to comment on your post, you should take the time to reply back and use the opportunity to check out their page to like or comment on their stuff too. Make new friends. That's what this is all about. Many times if they take the time to comment on your post, they will also be willing to accept a new friend request from you. So make sure the top post on your page is eye-catching and speaks to what you do what you do. Okay, so here were some of the responses I got. Congratulations, eager to know which industry is sexiest. I'm so glad you asked. I was so I knew someone was going to ask. That's why I put that out there. And what did I respond? The sexiest industry is travel. I help position people who want to earn additional income. Um, you know, position them on the money making side of the travel industry. If you'd like some information on it, please send me a friend request and private message me. I'm happy to share each one teach one. This is see now the admin can't kick me out of the group. And trust me, I've been more, kicked out of more groups than probably I've been put into. But I'm responding to someone in the group. So now it's not like I came in the group to prospect. She asked a question, I gave an answer. Y'all got that? Then we have here, the Diva Joan. Beautiful, can't wait to see your decor pictures. I love Davenport and plan on buying a vacation home there. And I said, the Diva, I have posted lots of pics since this post. Have you seen them? If not, please send me a friend request. I'm loving Davenport so far. Where do you live now? Now, let me tell you what happened to the diva. She, she was looking to buy a vacation home here because she comes to Florida often. I believe she lives in Michigan. She came to Florida. She told me she was coming to Florida. I invited her to my house. I did a presentation. She joined the business. She's currently a business partner. She's only focused on the travel side, but she's in the business. And it all started from this decorating group with that post, that introduction post. Melinda, welcome to Davenport. That's where I live too. Melinda, that's awesome. Please send me a friend request so we can keep in touch. Maybe we can meet up for coffee or drinks. Yashikia, was in this community yesterday. Beautiful homes, congratulations. Really, do you live in the area? Yes. Please send me a friend request. Nice to meet you. Y'all don't overthink it. We just making friends. Right? And then I'm I kind of share my story, right? The sexiest industry is travel. I help position people on the money making side of the travel industry as a way to earn additional income. Now, this is what I'm sending to them in the inbox, the people who inbox me, right? Or did I do this? I might've did this on a post too. I've been in it for five years and was able to retire myself and my hubby. It has been the single best decision I have ever made and it's paying 100% for my new six bedroom home. Again, tying it back to the group of what the business has done. If you wanna learn more, please send me a friend request and a private message. I'm happy to share. And look at all the people who say, can, can I send you a PM? That ain't even a person who commented. This person, info, this person, info. Absolutely. And then my response, check your inbox, please, and send me a friend request. Why? Because I don't want their messages ending up in my other folder. I want to make sure it's in my inbox. This person, info, please. Congratulations on your new home. Check your inbox. So happy for you. May I have more info about your job? All right. This is what I sent in the inbox. Now you could tweak this down or whatever. Y'all take a screenshot of this. 
but this is what I sent them in the inbox because I had so many responses. Nice to meet you. Thank you for your interest in my travel business. And then I'm sharing my story. Make sure your story has at least one or two of your never agains, okay? Because your story is going to look different than mine, right? And I tell them it may or may not be for you, but it's definitely worth learning more about. Here are two short videos, four minutes and three minutes to review. And I sent them preview ITA and preview rep. Now on the day that I sent this, we were also having a planet marketing presentation. So I also invited them to the marketing page. And I said, after watching, let me know if it's something that you're interested in. I'm still gonna follow up whether they respond or not, but I gave them what they needed so that I could take them. To, they got the P, which was the peaking interest was the post. The S, I'm showing them a little bit of the plan from here. And then the next thing is to, to follow up and schedule a three-way call. Very simple, right? The fastest way to hit your next level is to facilitate weekly private business receptions, AKA travel parties. Well, guess what? I was new to my area, so I really couldn't do weekly PBRs because I didn't know anybody here. So came up with this one. Here's another way, another thing you can post in certain groups, a picture of yourself. I'm looking for some more girlfriends. I'm not the club friend anymore. I have evolved. I'm the brunch friend, the spa friend, the wine tasting friend. I'm the day trip for dinner in another city friend. I'm the chill on the lanai with cocktails, discussing ideas on making money friend. I'm in central Florida. So if you live in the area and you vibe with what I'm saying, feel free to send me a friend request, right? I got so many people. So I posted that in a local Florida group and got so many people. I posted it in my neighborhood group. And now I got all these people who responded of different places that they live in my neighborhood so that I could meet them. I need to meet my neighbors. How am I gonna invite people to my house for a travel party if I don't know anybody? So this was how I was able to pull people out to send friend requests with, right? And some of these people I have sent, some of them have joined a business, some of them I've been to their house, they've been to my house. Some of them we went out for breakfast or brunch, right? I mean, it's it's been awesome. It's been absolutely awesome. All right. So questions, comments, feedback on that. Anybody just have another aha moment? Let's talk about it. No aha moments for anybody? I have a question for you, but I'll get back. Hi, Erica. Um, okay, so my question is, how do you keep track of people once you pull them from the group and into um, your personal page? Because I'm adding people on a regular basis, and I'm feeling like people are pretty much getting lost in the sauce. So do... Like, what's the process of keeping track and being able to build that rapport with these Great people question. that we've gotten from groups? Everybody that you engage with like this, you add them to your running list. You add them to your running list. Anytime you do a post about your business and people like or comment, you add them to your running list. Anytime someone joins, you know, accepts a friend request or sends you a friend request as a result of this, you add them to your running list. So you can no longer say, oh, my list is only 100 strong. You know how many, your list should be thousands of people long if you're doing this, especially on a regular basis, right? Now, everyone should have a weekly goal for how many people they're prospecting a week. And I always tell you the way that you, the only way you can really hit your weekly goal, your prospecting goal is on Sunday night. You, let's say your weekly prospecting goal is, I don't know, let's say 70 a week. Let's say, you know what, I'm gonna do 70, I'm gonna peak 70 new people a week. And I'm gonna break that down to 10 a day. I could do 10 a day. I could put 20, 30 hours a week in my business. I can prospect 70 people a week and I'm gonna break that down to 10 a day. So what you got to do is on Sunday night, 
you go to your running list and you grab the next batch of 70. You're not looking to see who, no, it's the next batch of 70. And so at some point, Erica, all the people who responded to this particular post are going to be in that batch. Now, I might they might not fall in the batch that happens this week or next week or even next month. They might not be in the batch that I grab until July. Well, guess what? Between now and July, they've had all this time to build rapport. I've had time to build rapport with them. They've had time to build rapport with me because they're liking and commenting on my posts. I'm being intentional about engaging with them. Does that make sense? Erica? Yes, it does. That's good. Good, good, good. Okay. You're welcome. Last one. This is the last one that I'm going to show you guys. Um, so the next door app, anybody using their next door app or familiar with next door? I love using the next door app. All right. So let me see. Uh, I thought I was in it. I thought I had it up. Okay. Hold on. If you don't have the Nextdoor app, I highly suggest you download it. And I'm hoping I'm able to pull it up without any issue. Oh, wait, I think I have it right here pulled up. So with the Nextdoor app, it is a neighborhood app. Nextdoor is going to allow you to connect with the neighbors in your neighborhood within a certain distance of your address. It doesn't put your address out there um, and you can, you know, limit how many people, um, you know, the radius that you want to look at. And so the Nextdoor app is very sensitive. You cannot go promoting your business on Nextdoor unless you have a business page. So your best friend with the next door app is going to be your private messages with your neighbors. Okay. And I'm waiting for my internet to open this thing up. So what I do on next door is very simple. I find neighbors to connect with, to become friends with on the app. And then once I waved at them and they waved at me, I do similar to what I just said about Facebook. I introduce myself and it's through my introduction that now I get to peek them a little bit. Not overtly, but just subtly. And then we kind of go from there. So get ready to take a screenshot. I'm gonna share with you, let me see, let me pull one where we actually engaged a little. Now, not everybody is on next door like all the time. So sometimes you may post something and then it might be a while before you get a response. So let's look at Carolyn. She's she's a good example. Okay, so I waved at Carolyn and then she said hi and waved again. And so now I got to introduce myself. So y'all take a screenshot of how I introduce myself and you tweak it to match yours. So here's mine. Great afternoon, Carolyn. I thought I'd take a moment to properly introduce myself. My name is Tanisha and it's nice to connect with you on here. I'm born and raised in New York, but my family, husband and son and I have been living in Florida since 2010. Hubby and I are entrepreneurs. We love Florida and wouldn't want to live anywhere else except for maybe a vacation beach home in Belize. Laugh out loud. I'm a marketing director who helps people who want to earn extra income start their own home-based travel business. If interested, click this link to learn more. Please keep me in mind if you or anyone you know is looking to earn extra income from home or planning a trip. And then I have the link to my IntelliTravel link, right? And then I asked her a question, what do you do? 
That's the call to action. I want to know what she does because no matter what she says she does, if she does respond with what she does, I also get to ask, you know, if she's keeping her options open. So now I get to use that first piece, right? But it just kind of depends on how the conversation is going. Real simple, right? And she said, okay, I can earn extra money by helping people travel. And I said, yes, you could book travel for yourself and others and earn commission. And then I sent her the preview ITA video. I didn't send the preview rep in this one only because of her response. Normally I don't send one without the other, but because of how she responded, I said, let me just hit her with the preview ITA. And then I said, let me know if you're interested, All right? Then we got, let's look at another one. Oh, the internet is just acting up. But Tanya was another person. All right, so waved at Tanya, good afternoon. Gave her the same introduction. She said, I'm an, I'm an accountant. I'd love to hear more. And I said, awesome. Do you have some time today to jump on a Zoom with me? I'll send you some info to look at beforehand and we can get your questions answered on the Zoom. And she says, sure. Can you send it over? I'll look at it when I get home. And so I sent her the big picture video. And then I did the follow up. Hey, Tanya, after watching the video, is this something you're interested in? She hasn't responded yet, right? So that's what I do with Nextdoor. And on my personal page of Nextdoor, I only really post about stuff that's related to the neighborhood because I don't want to get you know, a strike against me for prospecting or marketing. So I post, they love dogs. They, if you got a pet and you post it on next door, you'll get a ton of engagement, a ton, right? So they, they love that, right? Or if there's anything going on in the neighborhood, if there's an event happening, you know, I may post about that. Amira? So when you're when you're dropping the videos, right? At what point do you decide to schedule the follow up versus just a hey, hit me up when you're when you watch the video? I always follow up with them, but with next door because people aren't constantly on it like they are with Facebook, I have to wait for when they actually get on to see my message that I wanted to schedule time. But remember, we're looking for hungry people. And guess what? The hungry people are going to reach back out to you. Okay. And because I have multiple ways that I'm prospecting, I'm not just on Nextdoor. I'm not just on LinkedIn. I'm not just on Facebook. I'm not just on in Instagram. I'm not, I'm not hounding anybody. I'm not sweating them. Because I got multiple. So you're not. So for instance, like what we're learning in GoPro is we don't even send it without an appointment. So I'm, so I'm trying to like the the videos are the receipt because we have the appointment, which is after why I said the, the preview video to give them mm -hmm. a soft exposure of what the business opportunity is about, and if they're interested, when once I I can tell that they're interested, then I'm going to go in to schedule the appointment so that we could have a real conversation about it. But remember, this is a neighborhood app. I'm building relationships. It can't be a hard prospect. I'm already including some links with my introduction. I The goal is to pull out the hungry people. And when people are ready for a change in their life and they see that you have something that can change their life, they will jump in your inbox. Does that make sense, Amir? Yes, mm -hmm. it does. Thank you. You're welcome. We got 10 minutes before my next appointment. Any questions, comments, feedback? But he's Tanisha, last. I'm minutes. sorry. I didn't, I'm sorry to hey, interrupt. Janine. I didn't know how to put the raise your hand on the little screen hey, here. Up. Hey, how you doing, Janine? I'm good, Tanisha. How are you? Fabulous. Um, quick question. I know it's been like forever, but um, when you have your, your website, you know how you have Lux Platinum Travel, LLC. Travel, LLC. Uh -huh. com. And I know it goes right to your IntelliTravel yes. um, website. How yes. do you how do you get that? Do you go through um, GoDaddy or? Great question. So I purchased my domain through Genesis Domain. So if you log into your Planet Marketing website on your virtual office dashboard page 
in the quick links section, you will see Genesis domain. It's, it's basically oh. the same as GoDaddy. So okay. I purchased my domain name, Lux Platinum Travel, through Genesis domain. And then once you do that, I, I forget what it's called, but there's a way to forward your domain to whatever website you want it to go to. And so that's it. Okay. Because I, I just thought you could only do that for the planet marketing website. I didn't know you could do it for the IntelliTravel one also. You can do it for whatever you and want. Anyone? Okay. Awesome. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank and you. so I even purchased the domain for my name and that yeah. goes to my planet marketing. So if people go right. to TanishaBurke.com, it takes them straight to my planet marketing page. Why? And it'll give you, name. I'm sorry. It'll give you the um, email also. You purchase that separate. Purchase. If you want a business but it's through email, Genesis also? Yes. Yes. So okay. I purchased the email package for my domain, Lux Platinum Travel. So now my email from my travel agency is booking at luxplatinumtravel.com. Great question. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yep, Shamika said I have both as well. Mm-hmm. So this recording will be in our Team Lux Platinum group, but it will also be um, in my, on my YouTube channel, Lifestyle by Tanisha. Any other questions, comments, feedback? Was Hello. this helpful? Yes. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hey, Nick. Hi, it's Nick. Hi, um, just have some comments, um, uh, that I got out of the, uh, out of this. And, uh, to, to help with Cliff, I think Cliff, was the one that was saying that he was worried about uh changing you know how to change other people's lives when you haven't changed your life i like what you said about inviting people with you on your journey that's a great way to 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 help that yes uh, yeah that was very good i, I enjoyed that, that yes good. yes this, this thank you very, this has been very good i appreciate your time oh you're welcome you're welcome did i see another hand up Any other comments, feedback? Erica said- I just want to thank you for the reminder. Um, you know, I get a chance to spend a lot of time with you, so I'm blessed for that. But uh, a lot of the things that you were saying, um, you know how you just get complacent and you forget about things. Mm -hmm. So I just appreciate that you brought some of these things back. It's like going back to the basics. It's like, does Jamika, you used to do this. Like, why did you stop? So I just appreciate you just bringing it back to the forefront. And um, I would suggest everybody take at least one thing that they can apply immediately because that's exactly what I'm going to do as soon as I get off of the Zoom. So I just appreciate you and your time um, all the way through. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, yeah, uh, I want to say you also want to too, because I would do the same thing too. I feel like it is a refresher course, you know what I mean, to kind of, like she said, bring it to the forefront. And I also appreciate how you are not only helping our team, your organization, but you're also out here for the big team. And that speaks volume to your commitment to being a big team player, just not for your team, but for the entire planet. And I really appreciate you for all that you do, Director Burke. Thank you so much, Divorce. You know, I'm always, you know, my coach and mentor, Mr. Orlando Moore, has that big team mentality. And so I'm going to do what my coach does, right? He's, he's modeling what it looks like. And I may not be able to do everything that he does the way he does it, but I'm going to always strive to come as close as I can. And he is just a great example. You know, everybody needs to have a coach. Everybody should have someone coaching them. That's who I'm following. That's, and he's always had the big team mentality. And you'll find that when you hit directorship, for some reason, it just seems that the people that you tend to help the most are not even the people on your team. <laughs> I have people reaching out to me who are not on my team, um, and they seem to be the most appreciative a lot of times of what I bring to the table. But when you have the big team mentality, it doesn't matter. It, you're in it to help people, period. It doesn't matter. And I'm a believer, so I already know what God has for me is for me. So whoever God sends for me to help, all of you that showed up today, you are the ones that I am meant to help, whether you're on my team or not. That is why I have all of my trainings on the YouTube channel. 
so that anybody, whether you're on my team or not, you have access um, to any of the trainings that I do because my team group is just for my team specifically. I can't have people who are not on my team in my Team Lux Platinum group, but with the YouTube channel, I promise you, you're not missing anything that my team um, is not missing, is not getting. Uh, Lakeisha and then Erica. Yeah, I just wanted to like reiterate what Shamika and I'm saying. I definitely thank you for your time. Um, I'm putting this training together because it was like kind of a kick in the rear end, so to say. Cause like she said, I already knew. Definitely been staying plugged in. And it's funny, some of the things you said, I'm sitting here at my desk, or I'm like, that's on my list up there. That's on my list up there. So uh, I just want to say thank you once again for your time today. You're welcome. You're welcome. Erica? Um, yes, definitely. Thank you, Director Bird. Um, I don't, and when we talk about actually doing the things that you are giving us um, the information to do, it will definitely help our business because after my first one-on-one -on -one with you, my business has grown so much and I'm growing a lot as um, a leader, someone in network marketing. And I just appreciate you so much. Like last weekend, I was watching your YouTube on my TV and I was telling my parents, I was like, look, this is Director Burke, this is Director Burke. And I'm just so thankful for you because I've never in my life I've had anyone that I felt like I connected with that can actually lead me somewhere positive. So thank you so much for your time and the effort that you put into um, helping us grow our businesses. Thank you so much, Erica. And yes, the way you all can pay me back is MTG. <laughs> Sandra? Um, I just want to say how amazing you have been for over, it's been over a year now, and you just poured everything into everyone. You were just amazing. But the one thing I wanted to tell you is that just today I had someone text me and say, hey, I'm interested in learning more about the business. Nice. So, right? So now I schedule a three-way call with you. <laughs> I love it. And that's what I want. Fill up the calendar with three-way calls. That is right. amazing. Go, go close that deal. Let's close that. Well, you already know I'm going to close it. So just get them on my calendar right. and I'm going to close mm -hmm. it. But thank you so much, Sandra, for that. So I'm super excited. Y'all, this was a three-hour training. So congratulations to all of you that made your business a priority that you said, no, I'm taking the three hours out of my Saturday because y'all could have been anywhere. It's Saturday. It's beautiful out. You could have been anywhere, but you you took three hours out of your day to have this training with me. And I, my hope and prayer is that every single one of you got something out of this training that you can take and apply it today to help move your business forward. And last comment I'm gonna make, I am putting together a group cruise, Platinum Bosses for 2025 on Margaritaville. So stay tuned for that. I want us to be able to have some, some we're gonna have a lot of fun, but there will be some times for us to kind of get together. You guys always get to see me in this mode, the director coach mode, but I want to be able to engage and build relationships with you on a personal level as well. So stay tuned for that. Keep your coins, don't spend all your tax refund because I need you to be able to block your cabin. But that is something that I'm working on and I because I just desire to get to know all of you um, better and I have not done a good job of that in my opinion um, as as a leader so now I'm going to start putting together things that we can do together to get to know each other okay I gotta go because I have another zoom that I gotta get on right now love y'all I will upload this video today this concludes the training bye <laughs>